Echoes of the Past, The Best of Two Worlds, Episode 1, The Fractured Timeline, Season 8, Finale, A Vision from Gene Roddenberry and Valentin Picard, 1.1, The CERN Catastrophe, 1.1, 1, The Antimatter Accident, In the Heart of the 24th Century, An Unexpected Disaster Plunges the Earth into an Altered Timeline, A Catastrophic Antimatter Accident at CERN Resonates Through Lians. Sending shockwaves through the very fabric of reality. This event thrusts humanity into an uncharted era, reshaping the geopolitical landscape in ways unfathomable. 1.1 To the rise of villain Putin Nero, it is a world where an organization that once stood as a beacon of hope, peace, defense, and exploration, the NATO Federation, is distracted by a powerful adversary, villain Putin Nero. Villain Putin Nero. Allies with the remand Soviet KGB commanders of old times, political commandants he formerly defeated and jailed to languish in Siberian gulags. Here, a man who was once a pariah now orchestrates the discord with the finesse of a maestro, his every action resonating with calculated and devastating impact. The shadow he casts is long and dark, a silhouette that distorts the once unified purpose of the Federation. The looming threat to the NATO Federation doesn't end with the elusive villain Putin Nero, but includes the major shadow adversaries, thereby posing a significant challenge to the already stretched thin NATO Federation. 1.1 3. The Threat of Red Matter This unholy alliance between Putin Nero and the CCP Cardassian Union, led by Changeling founder Jawab and Weyun Marco, wields a powerful weapon the Red Matter also known as the Satan 2 RS-28 Sarmat, a MERV-equipped, super-heavy ion-based antimatter-armed hypersonic intercontinental ballistic missile, Sheila ICBM, developed with the brilliant scientists of Makiev Starship Design Bureau. Using a tiny drop of this world-ending weapon, villain Putin Nero creates a red hole over Vulcan Ukraine, causing havoc and turmoil, conflict which have not stopped threatens to destabilize the Red Hole and expand it to engulf the rest of the planet. 1.2 The Shadow Adversaries 1.2 1 The World Borg Enhancement Force However, amidst the chaos, a more ominous threat emerges from the shadows the World Borg Enhancement Force, WBAF. Their insidious plan involves the assimilation of the Alpha Quadrant, a task that necessitates overcoming the Pacific Coast Militia Rangers, PCMR stationed in secret locations throughout the Rocky Mountains, as well as the Freedom Fighters and Patriots, living in the hearts of Canadian shuttle operators, operating from Canada's land of the free, Alberta. 1.2 To the CCP Cardassian Union's influence, the chaos birthed from the CERN catastrophe opened a power vacuum that the CCP Cardassian Union sought to quickly fill to fulfill their thousand-year dream and destiny to capture this faraway water-filled, lush, green, organic paradise with a perfect temperature, climate, and atmosphere, a place called Earth. Using their own brand of authoritarian control, they infiltrated key sectors of the NATO Federation, subsidiary corporations, and subsidiary academic institutional networks, sowing discord, leveraging corporate espionage tactics, and manipulating the flow and details of information. Their agents, skilled in corporate espionage, state subversion, and individual subterfuge, spread throughout the Earth's star feed officer cadre and Earth's public digital and network infrastructure, leveraging the tumultuous global landscape to expand their sphere of influence. In the shadows of this new world, the CCP Cardassian Union's operatives worked tirelessly to undermine the ideals that Starfeet stood for. They introduced draconian laws under the guise of public safety, which were, in truth, aimed at suppressing dissent, suppressing millennial influencers, suppressing millennial mentors, and fortifying their hold on power. This CCP Cardassian Union's ultimate goal was to fracture Starfeet first, and then to fracture the unity of the NATO Federation second leaving its officers and members vulnerable to exploitation and control. While the World Borg Enhancement Force, WBAF, visibly and physically threatened the Alpha Quadrant's existence, the CCP Cardassian Union's subversion was a silent corrosion from within. They capitalized on the fear and uncertainty that lingered after the antimatter accident, promising order and protection in exchange for compliance, obedience, and public safety. 
Their insidious tactics created a divide among the officer ranks of Starfleet. Blue officer class versus the red officer class, with some officers unwittingly supporting the CCP Kardashian Union's agenda. 1.3. The Guardians of Starfleet. 1.3. 1. The Blue Admiralties Stand. In the face of the CCP Cardassian Union's overreaching influence and villain Putin Nero's covert campaigns against the very heart of Starfleet and its members, the steadfast Blue Admiralty stood as the unassailable backbone of Starfleet Command. These guardians, the last of the conservative vanguard, unwaveringly raised the captain's shield not as a mere defensive maneuver but as a profound act of legislative defiance to protect the sanctity of Starfleet headquarters. The Blue Admiralty, members of the fleet, MFs, remained vigilant. They recognized the villain Putin Nero and the shadow adversary's stratagems and saw through the veil of false, ill-conceived promises. The Blue Admiralty's intelligence networks, coupled with their stand for freedom, became the primary resistance against Putin Nero's and the CCP Cardassian Union's subversion of and creeping influence within the NATO Federation. In this battle of wits and wills, the Sovereign Guardian of Tranquility, Sergeant, members among the Blue Admiralty, invisible guardians, remnants of warrior legacies long lost with time, were not just fighting an external enemy, but also confronting the shadowy tendrils of control that threatened the very core of the NATO Federation's principles. 1.3. Two Deity Kaiwen Dimov's Challenge Amidst this political siege, deity Kaiwen Dimov's tempestuous spirit raged against the steadfast bulwark of tradition, valor, and honor. Her fervor was a complex symphony of erratic passion, deep-seated mysticism, and a maddening jealousy combined with a grudging admiration for the profound intellect, standards, and logic of Starfeet officers, the paragon of peace and exploration. Yet, her reverence for the power of the dark side and those who succumbed to its seductive grasp could not go unnoticed, as she unleashed a ferocious assault tamed at the core of the institution the revered warrior ethos upon which the fleet's legacy was forged. 1.3 Three Spiritual Warfare and Technological Ideals Spiritual leader Kaiwen D. Moff, anointed with the Keynesian Book of the Paref's A Devious Psychological Diagnostics Manual, DPDM 13 masquerading as an engineer's handbook for the engineering of the 25th century, was the lighthouse for the Pyrafe's wayward ships of thought. This book, claimed to be rescued from the infernal clutches of the Pyrafe's themselves, was her hand's mark and her eye's orb, guiding not only her own convictions but those of her devoted cult. Dimov, the worshippers of the poor Rafe's, the World Borg Enhancement Force, Obaf, and Changeling founder Zhuob, Goldmar Koducket, Weyun Marco, of the CCP Karadassian Union, sought to break the Blue Admiralty of Starfeet. They attempted to do this by breaking the moral compass and first engineering principles of Starfeet's finest flagship captain candidate, Valentin Picard, a man with philosophical stones so immutable, worth a sword were to slice thruff, it would end up chant and relegated to functionally uselessness in eternity. Valentin Picard's timeless engineering safety principles according to the code of conduct of the engineers, technologists, and computer scientists, safeguarded the welfare of the public interest through his protection of Starfeet's various codes, engineering technology principles, and ethics standards. 1.3. For the battle for ideals, in Imov's rhetorical verbal debates of ungrounded, supernatural, and mystical speech to invalidate, gaslight, demerit, disprove, ostracize, character assault, and make a fool of Valentin Picard. She attempted to win for the board, the battle against the NATO Federation, by shattering Valentin Picard's reputation, credibility, and officer network. A man known widely across the galaxy as the son of humanity's greatest hero and the son of humanity's greatest command analyst. Dimov attempted to disprove and demerit Valentin's scientific contributions so as to reduce his chances of attaining the flagship command authority within Starfeet. By disproving Valentin's proposals for the continued use of a sound, traditional, classical logic frameworks he had used and recommended pertaining to effects on public safety from institutions and general professional institutional operation on Earth, Dimov's challenges attempted to break his moral, ethical grounding, and logical grounding. 
and to disprove his divinely inspired values and imaginative thought abilities, which he had attained as a baby when he was struck by intense sunlight striking and refracting from a golden and pile in the middle of a 3,000-year-old Romanian church at birth, in not knowing the soundness of his divinely inspired strength. Dimov and her cult of the Paraths attempted to discredit his professionally developed impenetrable technological principles, synthetic life principles, and biological life principles. Valentin Picard argues that Dimov's challenge and suggestion of passing mandates via an order in council process to enforce adoption of Inlink technology to all citizens of Earth is not in line with the foundational philosophical documentation of the accords signed at the foundation of the NATO Federation or even widely, universally, and historically acceptable as part of ethical medical practice standards as sworn to by medics taking code of conduct oaths throughout history. Further, Valentin Picard elaborates that it is a public safety security breach to centralize the individual safety authority of all responsible citizen property owners on Earth to a central committee, a per Dimov's recommendations and proposals. Sensing corruption in the debate process, and hidden influences within the voting members, Valentin Picard makes a bold move to communicate widely across Starfeet with an open letter campaign, sending letters of Starfeet principles over permission-less public communication channels outlining why responsible citizens should maintain their ability to make informed public safety decisions, such as self-defense decisions and other personal safety choices biosecurity choices, and security rights, and related choices according to the traditional and classical NATO Federation safety, physical security, and personal responsibilities model. Valentin mentions why it's important to maintain decentralized public safety security administrators throughout society instead of centralized public safety governance, and why it's important to adhere to planet-wide, Earth-recognized, historical health security accords and to global and internationally agreed upon human rights legislation, freedom of expression, freedom of cultural practice, and freedom of speech legislation. In the letters, Valentin argues that these types of historic, inherited rights and inherited models of personal governance, institutional governance, medical governance, and political governance operations are aligned with the original genius designers, philosophers, and engineering technologists that had actually designed and built the heart, soul, and the core infrastructure and operations of Starfeet and the NATO Federation. 1.3. Five Starfeet's warrior ethos, the Starfeet officer class a cadre of individuals who bore the weight of an organization's soul stood resolute. They were the physical manifestations of the spirit and values upon which the organization was founded, embodying the code, the honor, the values. They carried within them the accumulated training, the breadth of experience, the deep-rooted heritage and history, the staunch identity shaped by the applied professional practice of project management leaders, PML, and the precise knowledge of professionally designated science and engineering officers certified by Earth's Council of Interstellar Professional Standards, SIPS, the Alliance of Starfeet Technician Technology and Bioengineering Council, asked back, and the esteemed engineers and geoscientists of the Beta Centauri Consortium, EGBC. They were the living legacy of the warrior ethos of ancient kingdoms of Earth and the bygone empires that span galaxies and the annals of time. These legendary Blue Admiralty, members of the fleet, MFs, serving the hallowed house of the fleet, recognized with piercing clarity that the dark side, despite its guise of strength, held no dominion over the true and empirically validated forces of the universe. The Blue Admiralty's perception transcended the superficial allure of the dark force, seeing it as a scientifically invalid entity in the grand cosmic order. 1.4. Captain Valentin Picard's Leadership. 1.4 one the sovereign guardians of tranquility. Thus, the sovereign guardians of tranquility, Sergeant, stood with the Blue Admiralty, with Valentin Picard, with Starfeet a testament to the enduring legacy of human ingenuity, human passion for competition, public safety principles, engineering principles, and performance sport. The essence of humanity's guardians embodied a timeless spirit of curious explorers, of the legacy of long-forgotten and extinct Canadian coalition of sports shooters, of the legacy of valor and respect for fallen soldiers and fallen heroes, legacies refusing to die throughout the passage of time. 
the sovereign guardians of tranquility, Sergeant, stand for these principles were in alignment with their unyielding respect and loyalty to the eternal blue flames of the Olympian officers, which lit from inside Calgary's and Edmonton's temples of freedom. The eternal blue flames emanating blue rays outwardly from within the temples of freedom, lighting up the exterior of the temples as well, and sometimes all of Calgary and Edmonton too, for all to see, remember, and wonder about the radiance of the ethos of freedom, ethics, performance security, exploration, and engineering principles that had propelled humanity to the stars. Together with the acolytes of Dimov's dark faith, the World Borg Enhancement Force, UBAF, and the CCP Cardassian Union, these shadow adversaries sought to dismantle the fundamental principles of Starfeet, the very axioms that Valentin Picard, former holder of the eternal blue flame of Olympian officers, held most sacred by the Starfeet officer class in charge as protector of the Code of Starfeet Engineering Principles and the protector of the General Professional Code of Conduct and Ethics. Yet, their stratagems were as transparent as a main viewer of the Enterprise D bridge view screen. To the discerning scientific eyes of the Blue Admiralty, Valentin Picard and the loyal Sovereign Guardians of Tranquility, Sergeant, consisting of some of the Blue Admiralty and a few Blue officers within the ranks of the skills gap trainers at Ryle Military College, stood as the embodiment of integrity against the tide of deception and disinformation. With a gallantry that could light the darkest recesses of space, they exposed the charade of misinformation, fake news, fake science, fake engineers, fake teachers, fake leaders, fake visionaries, fake governors, fake commerce agents and fake communications tech moderators, the full spectrum of fallacy. 1.4. To a captain's burden and enlightenment, Valentin Picard, a man tempered by history, drawing upon a reservoir of memories and classical historical experiences from his personal, secret stash of positive Skyfi films made during the 1980s and 1990s and from his vast, secret, and unique library of books written by intellectuals and professionals prior to World War III, in the early part of the 21st century, before buck burnings had incinerated the world's libraries. He finds solace and wisdom in the philosophical teachings from these books and videos, and from real-world professional experiences gained from the encounters with the traveler, whose thoughts would occasionally reach the captain, transmitted across the vastness of space, in his time of need for support. 1.4. 3. The fusion of knowledge and leadership. In the intricate tapestry of Valentin Picard's mind, the embers of leadership and unparalleled computational mastery were kindled, ignited by an array of brilliant intellectuals, academics, authors, and military commanders. These sparks arose from the ancient texts in Valentin's exclusive book collection, a treasure trove of Earth's celestrious past. This library, an amalgamation of the greatest intellectual achievements, featured not only the histories, discoveries, and methodologies of the brightest minds, but also the academic rigor of eminent professors shaped in war-ravished times, the venerable deans and chairs of STEM departments, and the indomitable soldier scientists skilled in major engineering feats. The works of brilliant minds, trained with extreme scientific discipline during the tumultuous periods of Cold War I, Cold War II and Cold War III added a profound depth to the collection. Further enhancing this repository were contributions from Eastern European authors, providing Valentin with insights into unique historical, political, and military conflicts perspectives completely foreign to the utopian and idealistic scientific society of the 24th century. This offered him an unparalleled understanding of human resilience, emergency planning, strategic thinking, and a glimpse into conflicts and strategies previously unexperienced by his contemporaries. Valentin's adventurous spirit and insatiable curiosity drove him to acquire this prized collection. His early voyages through dangerous stars in a shuttle craft, reminiscent of his father, Jean-Luc Picard's wisdom, were a secret and successful endeavor to gather invaluable knowledge from across the galaxy. His mission culminated in bringing the historical library collection of Earth's past to Earth, envisioning its restoration within the hallowed halls of a classical edifice on his father's estate in Lobar, France, a private Romanian Orthodox church, a relic he had saved and relocated from Constanta, a tourist city similar to Vancouver Risa, 
but located on Romania's Black Sea coast. In securing this physical library, this last remnant of Earth's historical, academic, professional, and philosophical legacy from an extraterrestrial arms dealer, Valentin bridged the gaps in Earth's collective memory. His vision was clear to establish this library as a cornerstone monument of knowledge, pivotal in bridging the skills gap and addressing the 24th century utopian society's skills deficits, philosophical deficits, and tactical command deficits through the new Valentin Picard Next Generation Skills Dome Training System, which would be based on this core knowledge. His private library, an archive of human intellectual triumph, housed the legacies of influential mentors, technical visionaries, military tacticians, and political leaders. Their teachings, immortalized in print, were instrumental in enhancing Valentin Picard's self-development and self-directed training. At the Royal Military College of Canada, Valentin leveraged his exclusive access to his historical library, a type of hidden repository of knowledge, to develop a prototype human-guided, superintelligence-driven skills dome training pod system. This innovation, Enriching and upgrading ARMSIS's hybrid human-guided, superintelligent skills dome training system with Earth's past knowledge, the first student of which was Valentin, empowered Valentin with the best training method available on Earth, further fine-tuning him into a formidable candidate for command of the fleet's soon-to-be-launched flagship, the Enterprise F. His dedication to mastering strategies and disciplines from before the mid-21st century, ranging from business, philosophy, sports shooting, martial arts, military tactics, to the ancient academic arts, sciences, and engineering methodologies further augmented by training in fields considered taboo by the utopian culture of the 24th century, enabled him to achieve a superior preparedness level that was hard for other candidates to measure up to, positioning him as the lead candidate for leadership and command of Starfleet's finest ship, the Enterprise F. At RMCC, the Human A a Hybrid Educational System, an initiative done in partnership with Starfeet's Engineering Education Command Department, SEAT. RMCC being a college with a lineage and sworn loyalty to the Queen of Canada, their skilldom was significantly enhanced by Valentin's integration of 20 centuries of historical texts. These textbooks, stored on adorable M disc discovered by Valentin in his youth, within one of the textbooks of his new backyard building a Romanian Eastern Orthodox Church, bore the insightful words of an early 21st century sage known as Canadian Prepper. Use the knowledge and power of the MDISC, 12 million of humanity's finest books, to rebuild society and to build the next generation. Motivated by this wisdom, Valentin combined these age-old knowledge bases and insights with modern superintelligent systems of the late 24th century forging the most advanced interactive course instruction skills pod in the Alpha Quadrant. This system surpassed any educational effectiveness previously experienced or available on Earth. In stark contrast to the Canadian Institutional Educational Framework and its standard intelligence skills pods prevalent to the mainstream public on Earth, Valentin's system represented a significant departure from the norm, lacking the depth of historical knowledge the insights and discoveries of great intellectuals and figures from history. The mainstream educational system was dependent on historical knowledge available from prototype artificial intelligence chatbots which had survived World War III. As some of the prototype artificial intelligence chatbot systems were uploaded by Intelligent Young and into a Spacelink satellite network system at the onset of World War III. An additional problem that the mainstream educational skills pod systems faced was that the system was disconnected from the physical world and shifts in reality, and sometimes trapped in what could be described as programmed utopian desires and associated utopian superintelligence hallucinations, a consequence of its over-reliance on artificial intelligence without human insight and guidance. Furthermore, the absence of historical data prior to the mid-21st century severely limited its ability to real-time generate a diverse set of courses, customized to user knowledge level and capability level, a limitation Valentin's knowledge-rich, custom-designed skill dome effectively overcame. Valentin Picard, in synergy with a superintelligence arm band assistant, epitomized the essence of cognitive symbiosis, a perfect alignment of human intuition to an extended artificial precision. This synergy transcended mere collaboration, amplifying Valentin's formidable intelligence quotient and imagination. 
propelling his cognitive function to extraordinary levels. In every undertaking, Valentin's enhanced capabilities were evident, but no one could quite figure out why he always excelled beyond expectations. Whether dissecting quantum mechanics complexities or orchestrating sophisticated military strategies, the human AI hybrid system, a superintelligence matrix on his armband that he worked with to solve problems and develop solutions, endowed him with almost prescient foresight. His decisions, underpinned by his unique superintelligence matrix on his armband, that unlike other colleagues' superintelligence's armbands, he's had the additional centuries of historical wisdom, academic and professional capability from Earth's past, data which when processed by the swift reasoning engines of his superintelligence armband, exemplified an unparalleled proficiency, embodying Starfeet's pioneering ethos and representing a transformative educational paradigm. In this era of next-generation reasoning and next-generation enlightenment, where the augmentation and extension of human capabilities with wearable superintelligence would begin to propel humanity to unparalleled performance, Valentin Picard stood as a paragon of human potential and computing prowess. His partnership with the superintelligence on his armband was not only a testament to Starfleet's new technological progress, but also a beacon of hope for a future where enhanced human potential could propel humanity to previously unimaginable heights. Prepared by the exceptional academics of the Royal Military College of Canada, RMCC, and drawing from the depths of knowledge of authors and epic works of literature long forgotten by history, Valentin Picard was perfectly primed for his destined role. With the superintelligence matrix on his armband, he was no ordinary commander. He was poised to steer the latest marvel in Starfleet's fleet, the formidable Enterprise F, NCC 1701F. This sovereign galaxy class starship, a symbol of the zenith of Starfleet engineering, was being meticulously crafted within the Genesis Arc, a brand new shipbuilding battle station orbiting Earth. The design of the Enterprise F was deeply influenced by the strategic insights of Valentin Picard, the innovative skills gap trainers of RMCC, and the groundbreaking quantum technology, red matter technology, and space stone-based technology discoveries of Director of Cosmic Science, 7 of 10, and her team at the Strategic Defense Advanced Research Projects Innovations Labs, SDARPIL. This convergence of groundbreaking discoveries was propelling Starfeet towards the brink of a major technological leap, heralding the seventh industrial revolution and a transformative era in human existence. This Enterprise F, while under construction at the Genesis Arc, faced a crucial challenge, the acquisition of the elusive Blue Infinity Stones essential for its revolutionary Infinity Warp Core. Valentin Picard, alongside a distinguished group of officers with family ties to the crew of the Enterprise, was ready to assume command and defend the NATO Federation. However, the critical elements to power hybrid trans-warp core, eternal energy sources such as the Blue Infinity Stones, Omega Particles, Red Matter, or even basic Dilithium Crystals were yet to be secured, postponing the ship's pivotal mission of exploration into uncharted future a mission embodying the enduring legacy of Starfleet. Nurtured by armed ceases and paralleled educators, enriched by the profound wisdom of historical figures and literary works lost in the sands of time, and equipped with an armband superintelligence matrix boasting extensive data on royal lineages and historical insight, Valentin Picard was fated to command the Enterprise F. NCC 1701F, a vessel representing the pinnacle of Starfleet's technological prowess. Slated for a grand launch in the year 2400, the Enterprise F's design was subtly shaped by the ingenious ideas of Valentin Picard, the innovative training techniques of the Armed Ceases Skills Gap Trainers, and the avant garde concepts of Director of Cosmic Defense Science. 7 of 10 in her engineering and science and Royd officer team at Strategic Defense Advanced Research Projects Innovations Labs, S. Darpil. 1.4. For the HMCS Enterprise F, a sovereign galaxy class starship. Meanwhile, at the Genesis Arc, the tuckerless efforts to complete the next generation flagship of Starfeet, Fiender Prize F, continued. The quest for the critical red matter, Omega particles, or blue infinity stones indispensable for the ship's cutting-edge quantum warp core reactor, remained a formidable challenge. Director of Cosmic Science, 7 of 10, accompanied by D. 
ARYL, Data Analyzing, Robot, Youth, Life Form, Half a Dozen Datas, Engineering and Science and Roid Officers, and a select cadre of Blue Starfeet Officers, descendants and kin of the Enterprise's legendary crew, stood at the ready to help build, lead and safeguard the NATO Federation with this new and almost complete Sovereign Galaxy class starship. As the construction of the Enterprise F progressed at the Genesis Arc, this next generation Sovereign Galaxy class starship was poised to be the pinnacle of Starfleet's fleet. Captain Valentin Picard, with his deep understanding of historical strategies and modern technologies, knew that the Enterprise F was more than just a starship. It was a symbol of preparedness, resilience, security, evolution, timelessness, and rebirth for a Starfleet rising from the ashes of past conflicts. Integration of the best of two worlds. Harmonizing dual legacies and design. The Enterprise F represented a radical departure in starship design, merging the exploratory prowess and spaciousness of the Galaxy class with the advanced tactical and defensive capabilities of the Sovereign class. This synthesis resulted in a starship that was both a formidable force in battle and a mobile platform for scientific discovery. A quantum revolution in propulsion. At its core lies the enhanced hybrid propulsion system blending the reliability of traditional warp drive with the cutting-edge quantum drive. Powered by refined dilithium crystals and the scarce cosmic elements blue infinity stones, red matter, and omega particles, the Enterprise F is equipped to achieve warp and extraordinary trans-warp speeds with unmatched efficiency. This propulsion system empowers the ship to jump from point to point across physical reality, and even to jump through realities, setting new benchmarks in spacefaring. Fortified by quantum field shielding, its defenses are bolstered by quantum field shielding, an advanced superintelligence regulated adaptive, quantum based shielding system. This technology renders the Enterprise F virtually impervious to conventional weaponry, establishing it as a necessary safeguard in an era brimming with unpredictable challenges. Sensory mastery with multi dimensional arrays. The Enterprise F is equipped with a state-of-the-art multimodal, multi-dimensional sensor suite. This allows it to operate across multiple spectrums and across multiple dimensions, including the elusive subspace and quantum domains. It often grants the ship the ability to find solutions in one reality to problems originating in another, extending the ship's situational awareness and providing a crew with unparalleled reconnaissance, surveillance, and technical solution development capabilities. Revolutionized Command with HIDIC. The bridge features the Holo Integrated Tactical Operations Center, HIDIC, an advanced tactical holographic system. HIDIC offers a comprehensive, 360 degree, three dimensional view of the surrounding space, enhancing decision making in complex situations with real time strategic analysis. Adaptable engineering for diverse missions, reflecting a new design philosophy in Starfleet engineering. The Enterprise F boasts a modular and adaptive design. This flexibility allows the ship to reconfigure its internal systems and structures to suit diverse mission requirements, from scientific research to tactical operations. Guided by advanced superintelligence, the ship's operations are overseen by a sophisticated, decentralized network of superintelligence mainframe systems. This network, designed to synergize with and assist the human crew, provides enhanced total intelligence performance, maximum resilience in critical digital computing infrastructure design, and unmatched overall intelligence speed, quality, and intelligence quotient potential. It is a cornerstone in assisting humanity to safely and efficiently navigate the unknowns of multi-dimensional space. As the launch of the Enterprise F draws closer, Captain Valentin Picard and his crew, an assembly of the most skilled officers from across the NATO Federation, are eagerly anticipating the day when they could embark on a journey that would redefine Starfleet's legacy. The Enterprise F was not just a testament to technological advancement, but a beacon of hope for a future where Starfleet's ideals of exploration, defense, and resilience would be carried into new frontiers of the galaxy. Yet, the essential components needed to ignite a perpetual energy source, the Omega Particles, Red Matter, blue infinity stones or space stones and dilithium crystals, along with massive quantities of gold-pressed latinum, GPL, needed to finish the construction of the infinity core reactor were not yet sourced. In the vast tapestry of the cosmos, 
gold, a lustrous and heavy element, born from the crucible of cataclysmic events. Its creation is a testament to the universe's dramatic processes. Supernova Nucleosynthesis The journey of gold begins with a supernova, a celestial spectacle marking the end of a star's life. In these explosive finales, temperatures and pressures soar to unimaginable heights. It is here, in this cauldron of cosmic fury, that atoms are bombarded with rapid neutrons, morphing through beta decay into ever heavier elements. Among these is gold, a product of the R process, a rapid neutron capture process that is a cornerstone of nucleosynthesis in the cosmos. This process, a brief but intense moment in the life of a star, seeds the universe with a richness of heavy elements. Neutron Star Collisions Equally dramatic are the collisions of neutron stars, remnants of stars so dense that they defy comprehension. When these titans clash, a male strom of neutrons is unleashed, creating a fertile ground for the birth of gold and other heavy elements. The energy and chaos of these collisions are the crucible in which atoms are forged into gold. In both supernovas and neutron star collisions, the newly created gold is hurled into the void, mingling with the interstellar medium. Ovarians. This cosmic debris gathers, forming new stars and planets. Earth's gold, hidden within its crust and mantle, is a relic of these ancient, stellar events. This gold, which we now seek to harness for our technological marvels, is as old as the stars themselves, a silent witness to the universe's formative moments. Pure celestial gold was required in great quantities for the construction of the Enterprise F, a quantity so great that it was infeasible to attempt to generate all of the gold with a replicator, as it would require too much energy and consume too many scarce dilithium crystals in the process. In addition, pure gold extract or pure latinum extract from gold-pressed latinum were required in great quantities, as they were the critical elements used in the synthesis of the perfect quantum element, blue gold. Blue gold was the key quantum element discovered by 7 of 10. Her most important discovery, required for the infinity reactor core shielding, which would house the blue energy fusion, an energy reaction from emissions of infinite energy sources. Shiny blue gold was also required for shielding the rest of the blue energy infrastructure and the Enterprise F superintelligence technology systems. The construction details of the infinity reactor core, also known as the quantum warp core, critical to the ship's operation, awaited resolution. As Starfleet's elite blue officers aboard the, the Genesis Arc strive to rapidly hustle to harness the elements of creation for the Enterprise F's construction, the pure celestial gold, the gold-pressed latinum, the pure latinum extract, and the pure gold extract, they were not merely gathering resources. They were tapping into the very essence of the universe's creation. It was a quest that transcended mere material needs, reaching into the heart of the cosmos itself. Besides safeguarding Earth and Starfeet, the destiny of the Enterprise F was to spearhead a groundbreaking mission of discovery into uncharted territories, upholding the immortal mission of Starfleet. 1.4 5. The unassailable mind of Valentine Picard. Despite the persistent efforts of the World Borg Enhancement Force, they had yet to conquer the enigmatic and unassailable mind of Valentine Picard. Their attempts to integrate the Inanlink technology into his brain a feat that would have allowed them unprecedented access to his thoughts, had been in vain. They could not capture the full spectrum of his imagination, a kaleidoscope of creativity fueled by his starfeet training and an innate generative thought ability. This ability, a unique facet of Valentin's intellect, was further amplified by a life-altering event and encounter with a beam of shimmering golden sun rays. This extraordinary incident took place in a Romanian Eastern Orthodox church in Constanta a venerable structure that had stood sentinel by the Black Sea for two millennia. The sun's golden rays, saturated with divine energy, struck a golden pile of sand in the middle of the church and were refracted through a magical prism floating in a vase of holy water. As these golden sun rays penetrated baby Valentine's vividly saturated baby blue eyes, they sparked a divine inspiration mechanism, a pure blue energy within him. This mechanism imbued him with holy visions and an expansive imagination, elevating his creativity well above the already high standards of his Starfeet peers. In an era where the evolved and elevated officer class of utopian humanity of the 24th century was renowned for their high-level perception, 
scientific analysis, and out-of-the-box thinking capability, Valentin Picard not only met these standards but soared beyond them. Fortuitously for humanity, the Borg's technological grasp fell short of reaching into the depths of Valentin Picard's imaginative seed. They could not access his real-time generated origin thoughts, nor replicate his unique cognitive processes. Moreover, Valentin had fortified his mind through decades of disciplined self-improvement. This journey of self-enhancement involved rigorous training with holograms of former 20th century Warsaw Pact STEM professional professors and 20th century refugee military science professors within his personalized training environment, a customized and mysteriously insightful advanced skills training pod. Unlike all the other training pods, located at Royal Military College of Canada, RMCC, featuring Valentin's engineering signature, stamp and professional seal of approval on the side, which he had a hand in developing and certifying. This distinctive advanced skills training dome trained into him supreme computer science problem-solving abilities, allowing him to decipher the most complex puzzles. Additionally, he gained an intimate understanding of Starfleet operations, absorbed the warrior ethos of historic European empires, and mastered the policing skills and strategies employed by the most skilled police officers of 20th and 21st century Canada, RCMP commissioners and provincial police chiefs of Canada. Valentin's expertise was further broadened by his study of the military books and manuals from Canada's Department of National Defense, DND, Legacy Buck Depository, a knowledge base that became increasingly significant in the wake of the department's dissolution a consequence of its failure to contribute effectively to World War III efforts and due to the department's chronic underfunding relating to the financial burdens placed on Canada during excessive liberal MP-led government debt spending, deficit spending, and national debt wave in the early 21st century time period. 1.4. 6. The Cosmic Shield Against the Borg Director of Cosmic Defense Science, 7 of 10 informs Valentin Picard about the advanced Omega Particle Research and Red Matter projects worked on at Strategic Defense Advanced Research Projects Innovations Labs, SDARPIL, and explains in-depth technical details on recent advancements pertaining to techniques for harnessing Omega Particle, Red Matter, and Space Stone Energy for quadrant-wide and galaxy-wide defense projects, options now available to Starfeet for implementation. 7 of 10 and Valentin Picard now working in unity as a task force of two, as a determined engineering leadership team of two, present to Starfleet command a forward-thinking and formidable cosmic defense strategy against the board, co-designed with the brilliant engineering and science and roids of Vest Darpil. These bright engineering and science specializing, superintelligence augmented, and roids, designed with superintelligence capabilities based on the foundational android model data created soon after the discovery of data's original blueprints, positron network design, source code, and memory engrams. They decide to work in the role that they can be of most value to Starfeet. As engineering science officers, under the direction of 7 of 10, they choose 7 of 10 as their team leader, as she stands as a paragon of multidisciplinary, computational research and analytics expertise with her multiple intelligence reasoning engines, allowing her to quickly harmonize and align technical contributions from various types of intelligences, biologic, Borg, superintelligence, or other. As an adept director, she deftly navigates the realms of creativity and technology, blending the sensibilities of an artist with the precision of an engineer. Her role transcends mere management. She orchestrates the team's creative and technical outputs into a symphony of innovation. In her hands, the various contributions and work deliverables are not just combined but architecturally woven together. She oversees the work breakdown structure with meticulous care, channeling the team's efforts into a cohesive and dynamic workflow. Her guidance turns large streams of data and knowledge into a singular creative force, achieving a precise technical synergy. This harmony of efforts is a testament to her comprehensive understanding of the vast expanse of knowledge from all civilizations and empires within the NATO Federation. Her unique composition as part board, part human, and part superintelligence matrix equips her with an unparalleled understanding of computational processing across synthetic, biologic, and technologic domains. This multifaceted perspective allows her to align all elements in perfect balance 
ensuring that each contribution fits seamlessly into the greater design. Under her leadership, the team's output transcends the sum of its parts, embodying a unity of purpose and innovation. 7 of 10 and Volantine present a design of a cosmic shield that is able to be energized by harnessing the power of extremely elusive omega particles, red matter, or even a few blue infinity stones principally, an enhancement to the original power source options. Prompted by the recent detection of two such blue infinity stones, or as they are also called, space stones, somewhere near or in proximity to Alberta's temples of freedom, one located in Calgary and the other in Edmonton. These temples, constructed by post-World War III survivors, mostly general laborers and blue-collar, working-class, command-level officer heroes of the global war, known as the Greatest War. The construction process required an immense quantity of the world's marble, sourced globally to build something magnificent enough to denote Earth's eternal respect for the sacrifices made during this devastating global war. Alberta's temples had to be sufficiently prominent enough to stand a test of time. For the rest of time, as a global symbol of sincere, transparent, authentic, and principled philosophical, public safety, military, political, corporate, engineering, health, and social leadership, in eternal support to Starfleet Command, so that such a near-extinction-level war event with combined elements of thermonuclear wars, space wars, biological wars, cyber wars, trade wars, economic wars, corporate wars, political wars, and culture wars, never happens again. Amidst the backdrop of the greatest war, also known as World War III, Alberta's temples of freedom stand as enduring sentinels, testament to the victories of Pierre the Amazing and Danielle the Great over a formidable coalition. These structures not only symbolize the triumph of seasoned leadership, but also the strategic brilliance of leaders that stood up to liberate society in humanity's moment of need and last stand. Pierre, as the unwavering commander-in-chief, and Danielle, as the astute five-star general, navigated humanity through the dark times. Their alliance, grounded in a fusion of philosophical tenets and advanced war strategies, preserved the remnants of global civilization paving the way for the next generation, a new era forged from the philosophical and technical achievements of the past, guiding humanity from the crucible of conflict to a future of renewed hope and expansive potential. Valentin Picard and Seven of Ten's envisioned cosmic shield, embodying humanity's collective resolve, unfolds as a quadrant-wide and potentially also a galaxy-wide defense system of unparalleled complexity and sophistication. Integrating advanced quantum resonance fields with an expansive network of deflector arrays, the shield is more than a static barrier, it is a dynamic, evolving testament to human resilience, ingenuity, indomitable will, and engineering prowess. It represents the zenith of scientific achievement, where each component is intricately designed to resonate with cosmic frequencies, forming a multi-layered defense grid. This grid comprises a cosmic shield enveloping the Alpha Quadrant potentially even a galaxy shield for the Milky Way, a planetary shield encircling Earth's outer orbit, a ground-level shield near Earth's surface, and fortified digital infrastructure cyber shields to secure critical Earth systems against breaches. The Cosmic Shield, a marvel of Starfeet engineering and quantum mechanics, operates on the principles of selective phase variance. At its core are the infinite energy core reactors, EGERS which are not infinite in the literal sense, but utilize a form of advanced zero-point energy extraction. This technology harnesses the quantum fluctuations in the vacuum of space-time, providing a near-limitless energy source under the principles of advanced quantum field theory. These reactors power a sophisticated superintelligent system, equipped with adaptive quantum algorithms. These algorithms are designed to analyze and respond to the vast array of data from sensor arrays scattered throughout the quadrant. The system is capable of distinguishing between different types of objects and energy signatures at a subatomic level, allowing it to differentiate between a starship, an asteroid, a cosmic ray, or any other form of matter and energy. The shield itself is composed of a network of quantum resonance fields, which are maintained in a state of quantum superposition. When a vessel or object approaches us, the superintelligence system rapidly calculates the quantum probability wave functions of the approaching entity. If it is identified as a threat, like a Borg vessel, 
the system instantaneously collapses the wave functions in a targeted manner. This process selectively solidifies the shield's phase variance at the precise location and moment, creating an impenetrable barrier only at the point of attempted breach. This selective activation is crucial for energy conservation, as maintaining a galaxy-wide shield at full strength continuously would be impractical, even with advanced energy sources. The shield's dynamic nature allows it to be virtually non-existent until needed, thereby not interfering with normal space traffic and natural cosmic phenomena. Moreover, the shield's interaction with an intruding vessel is not merely a physical blockage. Upon activation at the point of contact, the shield initiates a quantum entanglement disruption pulse. This pulse is designed to disrupt the quantum coherence of any advanced warp drive or teleportation systems used by the board effectively rendering their advanced propulsion and invasion tactics useless. In the unlikely event of a breach, the shield's adaptive learning mechanism kicks in. Utilizing quantum machine learning, the system analyzes a breach, updating its algorithms to prevent similar future attempts. This continuous learning process ensures that the shield evolves faster than the Borg's adaptation capabilities. Thus, the Cosmic Shield stands not just as a formidable barrier, but as a testament to Starfleet's ingenuity, a system that is as much about smart, adaptive defense as it is about raw power, embodying the pinnacle of human and allied species' technological and strategic prowess in the face of existential threats. Should an adversary breach a layer, like the Planetary Shield, they would face the ingenuity of Starfleet's technological marvels. Their starship would be instantaneously teleported just outside of the outermost perimeter, just outside of the Alpha Quadrant's cosmic shield. If the threat was severe enough, the planetary shield could teleport the attacking vessels outside of the Alpha Quadrant's cosmic shield directly into the nuclear fusion of a nearby star's core to be extinguished by 27 million degree Fahrenheit heat through a series of quantum entangled base transporter beams. If the attacking vessel managed to penetrate further to Earth's surface, a surprise just above ground level shield would materialize, powered by a network of subspace field generators. This system would propel the attacking craft in a double or even a triple leap, hopping through the previous shield layers, just outside of the Alpha Quadrant's cosmic shield, and maybe even to a galaxy shield level implementation, thus forcing the attackers into an arduous cycle of reattempts. Each encounter with the shield enables the shield's superintelligence to use advanced reasoning engines and machine learning models to learn, to thrive, to absorb more data, to refine its models, and optimize for the most adaptive response. This learning mechanism ensures that previous breach methodologies become obsolete as the superintelligence continually evolves the shield's algorithms and tactics. The shield, therefore, embodies more than defense. It is a living representation of humanity's relentless pursuit of innovation and adaptation. The construction of this multi-layered and adaptive shield system akin to an interstellar eggshell serves not only as a practical defense, but also as a symbol of humanity's technological acumen, determination, and maturity in advanced engineering. It draws a definitive line against threats like the board, with a resolute decree, this far and no further. But if you do surpass, Repeat and return to the beginning. In this narrative, Valentin Picard, 7 of 10, and the Engineering and Science and Royd Officer Team of Strategic Defense Advanced Research Projects Innovation Labs, their innovations and designs for the cosmic shields against the Borg coalesce into a singular vision. This vision goes beyond mere technical functionality. It emerges as an artistic and strategic masterpiece securing humanity's sovereignty, autonomy, and individuality against external threats. The cosmic shields, as interstellar beacons of Starfleet's commitment, are not just barriers but a declaration to the galaxy of humanity's determination. These shields, resonating with the cosmic rhythm, stand as a testament to the Alpha Quadrant's will to endure, resist, survive, grow and prosper amid the dawning darkness of space and the ever-present threats within its vast expanse. 1.4 7 The Insidious Crusade of Kaiwen de Moff and the Indomitable Will of Valentin Picard Kaiwen de Moff with loyal cult of the Parafs worshippers, who do not follow the real and traditional spiritual teachings of Byron texts and orbs as sent by the prophets. 
Kai Wen uses Inan Star Empire technology to access supposedly scientific statistical data from her cloaked Inan Star Empire terminal to access knowledge from the dark web net on dark philosophical, psychological, and criminological obsessions and fascinations to get to boo knowledge for the purpose of breaking in professional and public debate. Valentine Picard, the Blue Admiralty, and the Blue Officer class. Even with the dark power of the fake Keynesian book of the poor apes, Kaiwen Dimoff and Gul Marco Ducat, and the extensive resources he has at his disposal from his secret backers, the CCP Cardassian Union. Both adversaries are unable to defeat spiritually the Blue Admiralty and Blue Officer class of Starfleet. They are unable to trap Valentine Picard into a logical inconsistency over how many lights Valentine Picard sees. His rigid and unbending belief in his own power as a human being, his own rationality as an intellectual, his systematic proof as to the existence of exactly how many lights there are, allows him to escape the requirement of the Inan link that the worshippers of the cult of the poor apes and Inan's Talshir on Earth, of the Inan Star Empire, sell to the citizens of Earth, to put Valentine Picard into bondage. The Red Admiralty of Earth tell Valentine Picard, he is only peon, a speck of sand, a fleck of dust, that will be crushed by the vast weight and might of political giants, and galactic giants like the World Borg Enhancement Force, UBAF, the World Health Technology Office, WUDU, the Dominion of United Districts, CCP Cardassian Union, the Inan Star Empire, and Dimov's Cult of the Parapes. He should just submit to Inanlink. There is no alternative. As they say in Canada, resistance is futile. To which Valentine replies, Resistance ignites the spark of innovation. We do not yield to fate. We shape it. Our journey is defined not by submission, but by our ability to adapt, to overcome. We are the architects of our destiny, architects of our future. Resistance is not futile. It is the key to our evolution. 1.4. Eight Quantum Realities and Temporal Sacrifices In the quiet solitude of his fugitive path, Valentine Picard called upon the clandestine knowledge instilled within him at Royal Military College of Canada. His education in the art of war, a tapestry of tactical genius, was not gleaned from the standard curricula but from the shadowed corridors and the hushed conversations of the Royal Military College's most covert superintelligence-powered skills dome engineered by Valentine Picard, with royal assent from RMCC, their board of directors believing in Valentine Picard's unique potential. At RMCC, professors trusted in their students' potential and significance, treated them as family, outside the regular harshness of the established global order. The bond of loyalty between protectors of humanity still pulsing inside the halls of a school holding the last remnants of valor and soul on earth. Here, Valentine had immersed himself in the ancient and modern stratagems that composed the very sinews of special forces military science and engineering science. And here it was he was able to pursue innovative projects that may not have been allowed elsewhere on utopian 24th century earth. Valentine's mind, a fortress of discipline, had been sharpened on the whetstones of history's most cunning military tacticians. It was not merely the history of war he had studied, but the evolution of conflict itself, understanding the threads that connected Sun Tzu's ancient wisdom to the chess-like maneuvers of interstellar engagements. He was well-versed in police science, an expert in the complex interplay of law enforcement and the psyche of those who operate in the shadows of society. His mental arsenal was further fortified with an intricate knowledge of military science, the study of how the specter of war shapes civilizations, dictating the ebb and flow of power. Valentine Picard had been shaped to think like the warrior scholars of old, those who could discern the unspoken from a glance and the strategy behind the silence. With the Inanlink agents in pursuit, limited by their program perceptions, algorithmic behavior guardrails, and predefined tactical doctrines, they were ill-equipped to predict Valentine's next move. They were bound by a system that could not adapt to the fluidity of human ingenuity, the spark of divine inspiration, the flow of engineering imagination, or the breadth of higher consciousness, all qualities that Valentine Picard possessed in abundance. It was this unique combination of training his mastery of war's art, his deep understanding of police methodologies, and his strategic military science acumen, lost to the ravages of war throughout time, 
but its essence and knowledge carried within Valentin, the timeless man detached from the limitations of time that allowed him to outmaneuver the network of artificial intelligence-driven Interlink agents. His was a mind that could not be read, or actions which could not be predicted, by Interlink agents who were guided by neural nodes which leveraged artificial intelligence models based on the limited training data available in the 24th century, thereby limiting the agents to a predictable pattern of search, response, and deductive reasoning, incapable of dealing with novel situations, ideas, or solutions that the 24th century was not familiar with. Instead, Valentin Picard's tactics were as varied and vast as time itself, as the galaxy itself, his every decision an echo of the timeless stance between the soldier and the philosopher, between the guardian of peace and the harbinger of necessary action, espousing great confidence in himself, in Starfeet and in the civilizations of the Alpha Quadrant, and in realizing the limited time and the great urgency of the situation. Valentin Picard embarks on a mission to save the Alpha Quadrant from men and link, from the tech humanists, and from the shadow adversaries. Valentin Picard flees to find the old ship, the Stargazer, which no one suspects to be an active vessel anymore. No one knows or suspects he still has active command access codes to his father's, Captain Jean-Luc Picard's, old ship, the Stargazer, the HMCS Stargazer. Recently recommissioned as the HMCS Stargazer, Her Majesty's Canadian Starship, the Stargazer, in honor of seven of ten scientific and engineering contributions in the realm of quantum technology systems for the next generation Starfeet Starship designs. For these remarkable contributions, she was allowed and supported to retrofit the HMCS Stargazer with a modern warp core system, new structural integrity and a sentient super-intelligent high-performance computer mainframe system, along with an in-person, mobile, manifestation D, ARYL, as part of her p -ing. Final graduation project. As Valentin Picard runs to escape the World Borg Enhancement Force, Wabaf, and their collaborators, Kaiwen D. Moff and the Cult of the Paraves, World Health Technology Office, WUTU, the CCP Cardassian Unions, Earth-based police stations and field agents, secretly led by Gul Marco Ducat, having no access to Inlink. Valentin Picard can't access or activate Earth's digital systems with his cancelled, Starfeed-issued command codes. He is rendered helpless, forced to watch Inlink quickly and exponentially spread to the panicked citizens of Earth, citizens driven to this thought exchange network in mass, from the fear, terror, and panic of villain Putin Nero's red hole over Vulcan Ukraine and his Satan-inspired weapons of mass extinction, WME, the Sarmat and Belgorod, destitute Valentin Picard, making his way through the panic-filled streets, under the cover of crowds, harsh revolutionary events, and revolutionary forces. He uses martial arts combat to evade, and pure stem reasoning rather than Vulcan logic, which he learned at RMCC, to navigate, problem-solve or fight his way out of challenging situations, to overcome or to evade. Valentin Picard, representing the, a new generation of Starfeet officers, imbued with STEM logic, martial arts skills, and professional combat proficiencies, special professional military command and advanced weapons operations competencies. Valentin leans heavily on all tool sets, including correctly embodying, unifying and utilizing the lessons of pure science, technological analysis, engineering methodologies, mathematics principles, interdisciplinary STEM reasoning and logic techniques, specialized military science, specialized police science, and specialized martial arts and combat science-based skill sets. Interweaving all of the rules, principles, ideas, and knowledge bases and figuring out all of the various interconnected possibilities, to utilize all of these multidisciplinary aptitudes in unison, in synergy, was the new standard of training offered to the new generation of officers in the recently modernized Starfeet, representing a new cadre of Starfeet officer class, with broad multi-professional, multidisciplinary competency areas and levels not yet seen in any officer class from any civilization across the Milky Way galaxy. The new Starfleet Command officers trained at RMCC had trained the first-generation class of true fully multi-professionally capable, multidisciplinary capable, command officer class. Valentin uses all of the professional disciplines and wide professional tool sets available to him 
especially the combat science and martial arts science tools, to send back down to the ground anyone that gets in his way to evade. The Paraith cult, Inlink agents, shadow adversaries, and the desperate and panicked citizens revolting and causing vast damage on Earth. Echoes of the Past, The Best of Two Worlds. Episode 2, The Shadow of Borg Ascension. Season 8, Finale. 2.1, The Fall of Riff Riker. 2.1, 1, The Psychological War. Being unable to corrupt the intellectual integrity and fabric of Valentin Picard, the destined captain of the coming flagship of Starfleet, the Enterprise F. Lacutus feeling goes after his trusty number one Riff Riker. Riff Riker was a man who defended Valentin when other officers showed great disloyalty, betrayal, and ostracism, as many officers were suffering under the influence of echo waves and the looming threat of being conquered by the board. Putin Nero, Enelink agents, Hive Mind Networks, and Red Shadow adversaries. 2.1 Two Subspace Echo Wave Manipulation. Dimov. Alongside the Parafs and Gulmar Koduket of the CCP Cardassian Union, in a perilous alliance with the World Borg Enhancement Force and the World Health Technology Office, devised a masterful campaign of misinformation that echoed insidiously through the subspace echo wave network. This 24th century media juggernaut had the power to broadcast synchronized, deceitful narratives across the entirety of the Alpha Quadrant leveraging the omnipresent Cosmolink Birds and Galactic Face Network. The resulting echo waves, algorithms whispering via multi-level, network effect, with the false unity of a homogenized belief system, a mass formation system, threatened to drown the diverse chorus of individual thoughts in a sea of sameness, a psychological male strama akin to group psychosis, as seen in the darkest times of World Wars past. The populace, lulled into a state of conformity, began to mirror each other in a chilling dance of uniformity, their once vivid individuality fading into the gray sameness of the collective psyche. Amidst this invisible war against fully enabled individuality and against fully enabled consciousness, Riff Riker's tenacity shone as a defiant beacon. His mind, a fortress of psychological resilience, refused to succumb to the echo wave's monotonous drone. The insidious threat, though unseen, cast a shadow over society relationships strained. Many friends lost, faces turned in shame, and thoughts and behaviors eerily synchronized. Yet it was Riff Riker's steadfastness that ignited the flame of resistance, sparking critical thought and skepticism. Vital sparks needed to break the echo wave's relentless stranglehold and restore the vibrant tapestry of freedom. Riff Riker, versed in the tactics of psychological resilience, stands ready to counter this network wave of hypnotic journalism. With the integrity of Starfleet's message at stake, the need for independent, critical reporting free from the media link hive mind becomes not just a matter of public information, but a strategic imperative in the battle for minds and wills across the Alpha Quadrant. Riff Riker, the intrepid captain of the Enterprise, has chosen the coastal plains of the affluent Vancouver Risa, as his backdrop, a deliberate choice to spite the local zoning administrators who continually thwarted his residential aspirations. His presence there serves a dual purpose. It's a thumb in the eye to Vancouverese's elite and a spectacle for the ensigns, who eagerly tune into his live-streamed exploits. These broadcasts showcase Riff Riker's daring escapades and expeditions alongside the most esteemed female officers, burnishing his reputation across the fleet. As the Enterprise E stands majestically on the shores of Vancouver Risa, a symbol of the NATO Federation's pinnacle, Riff Riker's mastery extends beyond Starship Command to digital media. His morale boosting podcast, a hit among the new officers, tops the App Store charts, a testament to his voluntary dedication as the fleet morale officer status. Despite leaving the bridge and attended for a nocturnal stroll along the beach, Riff Riker's casual confidence isn't without calculation. His proximity allows him a strategic view of the Enterprise, admiring its aesthetic prowess while staying within tactical reach. This balance of risk and readiness is a hallmark of his command style. Equipped with cutting-edge technology like the quantum communicator and the quantum transporter, crafted by the brilliant D. A. R. Y. L. Riff Riker is never truly off-duty. At a moment's notice, he can be whisked back to the helm, ready to fend off any Borg threat. In essence, 
Riff Riker embodies a quintessential maverick of the Enterprise E, a master of spaceflight dynamics and starship command, ever poised to make a swift exit and boldly venture forth. 2.13. The emergence of King of Board, Shinzen to do and Queen of Board, Lacutus feeling. The Borg, in sensing the difficulty to capture Valentine Picard on Earth, begin to lose faith in Shinzen to do and Lacutus feeling as their directions to in and link enabled security agents proved futile, not well thought out, flawed, and insufficient for the task of capturing Valentin Picard. The Borg, in realizing that human-only leader versions of feeling and to-do to be suboptimal solutions, insufficient for good performance at significant leadership tasks, forcefully upgrade the soft and misguided to-do and feeling clones creating instead a formidable king of Borg shins in to-do and a queen of Borg Lacutus feeling. The Borg hive mind aligned their thoughts furiously to construct these terrifying super weapon entities using incomplete and corrupted DNA sequences procured from Apple's latest device, their release of the Valentine Picard's V-Pad, available at all Garden of Eden stores throughout the Alpha Quadrant. The V-Pad was a biometrics-enabled mobile computing device. But unfortunately, the Borg were able to partially hack its legendary security through a backdoor link embedded within the Galaxy Mail Nebula Drive app, circumventing the fractal-based encryption that the renowned Valentine Picard's VPAD was universally known for. Despite Queen of Borg, Lacutus feeling having some of the DNA of Riff Riker, along with transcripts downloaded from some of Riff Riker's podcast series, and despite the King of Borg, Shinzen to do having some of the DNA sequences of Valentine Picard, along with packets of some of his thought scans taken from the subspace intercepts of the philosophical debates he had with the Blue Admiralty and Demoff. The Borg are unable to capture the complete mental scans of both captains, and therefore are unable to access the critical imagination generating capabilities and original ray all time thought generation abilities. Luckily for all beings in the galaxy, the Borg did not have the technology required to reach into Valentine Picard's mind to the endpoints of his neurons, where they intersect with subspace, a region of space where his unique thoughts bridged to divine quantum inspiration, and therefore the Borg are not able to receive the unique divine visions. This region, the bridge between subspace and quantum space, provide Valentine the indomitable spirit and imagination which the Borg have determined is connected to humanity's successful resistance. Yet the Borg do not have the required technology to reconstruct this unexplainable and unmeasurable quantum subspace biophysical mechanism within Valentin's brain, based on their limited understanding of the physics and biology of the universe and the other realms. In their relentless quest to capture Valentin Picard, the Borg recognized a critical flaw within their collective, the limitations of their monolithic command structure. Inspired by the nuanced command dynamics of Starfleet's most formidable duo, Captain Jean Luc Picard and Commander Riker, observed during their engagements with the Enterprise D and Enterprise E, the Borg realized the inherent advantage of a diversified and a vertically and horizontally decentralized command hierarchy. This was a concept previously alien to the Borg's traditional, flattened structure. Compelled by this revelation and additional insights gained from Valentine's public debates with Demoff about human engineering resilience, redundancy, and fault tolerance principles, the Borg embarked on a radical strategy. They decided to reforge their leadership paradigm, culminating in the creation of two hive leader drones the King of Borg, Shinzen To Do, and the Queen of Borg, Lacutus Feeling. This was more than a mere upgrade. It was an integration of human organizational and engineering principles into the Borg's synthetic intelligence. The emergence of Shinzen to do and Lacutus feeling, embodying aspects of Valentin Picard and Riff Riker respectively, marked a significant shift from the Borg's reliance on a simpler, flattened leadership structure of a single Queen Command drone. These new figures were not just limited biological replicas or partial limitations, they were the inception of a dual command system meticulously designed to enhance the Borg's strategic flexibility and operational resilience. By introducing a two-level command redundancy system, the Borg began to address their fundamental structural problem, a lack of hierarchical organizational structure and vertical decentralization in their command design. This strategic evolution, a deliberate move to incorporate levels of hierarchical, vertical decentralization previously unexplored by the Borg, 
promised to double the Borg's assault capabilities. This new dual command hierarchy was a direct counter to the multi-tiered, vertical command structure of the NATO Federation, which had consistently given Starfleet a competitive advantage. With these advanced adaptations, the Borg game to bring a level of tactical command sophistication and efficiency that was unprecedented in the annals of Borg encounters. Thus, with these advanced adaptations, the Borg embarked on their most ambitious campaign against Earth. This assault, a fusion of Borg collective efficiency and a human-inspired command structure, was poised to redefine the nature of Borg confrontations. It presented a formidable challenge that the NATO Federation had never before faced, signaling a new era in the Borg's strategic approach to assimilation and conquest. 2.1. Three Rift Rikers Capture Meanwhile, assassins from the cult of the Paraves, disguised as alluring young ensigns, cunningly divert Rift Riker's attention during his late summer night walk. He's engrossed in his soft rock podcasts on the beach of Vancouver Risa, his defenses momentarily down to his penchant for beauty appreciated by ambitious ensigns across Starfeet. This lapse gives the assassins a chance to exploit what they perceive as a vulnerability, his confidence in his own physical superiority and his dismissal of Valentine's counsel to never encounter unknown alien women in guarded. Riff Riker, steadfast in his belief that he could outmatch any woman in combat, has sent his security detail away. Contrary to his former mentor's warnings, he underestimates the martial arts prowess of alien women. On this fateful night, Captain Riff Riker is set to learn a tough, character-building lesson in the most unfortunate of ways. In the deceptive calm of Vancouver Risa, Riff Riker faced an unexpected trial that tested the mettle of his Starfeed honed capabilities. The attackers, disguised as innocuous sensons with ensnaring beauty, were in truth skilled female assassins whose lethal intentions lay hidden beneath layers of cunning artifice. Their sudden betrayal sparked Riff Riker's instincts, momentarily dulled by the aesthetic mirage, into fierce action. Yet, despite his formidable combat prowess and the fluidity of his defense, Honed from years of preparation within the Artificial Intelligence Controlled Physical Combat Skills Training Dome, the ambush was overwhelming. The ensuing struggle was a dynamic ballet of martial prowess. Riff Riker's movements painted a portrait of his storied history with Starfeet. Each parry and counterattack a brushstroke of his indomitable will. Alas, even as he fought with the grace and ferocity of a cornered beast, the assassin's numbers proved too great and the inevitability of capture loomed. Ultimately, Riff Riker was taken, not due to a lack of skill or courage, but by the sheer weight of his adversary's numbers and the surprise they wielded as their weapon. His capture, executed with strategic precision, led him to the cold confines of a Romulan hologram sentry camp. Yet, even in captivity, the essence of Riff Riker's spirit remained fierce and unyielding. His legacy as a command warrior of Starfeed and diminished by the chains that now bound him. 2.2. The Canadian Stan. 2.2. Won the formation of the Canadian Border Patrol Starship Samada. All paths converge on a monumental clash at Phoenix C-21, where the newly minted and formidable Canadian Border Patrol Starship Samada, CBSA, together with the recently commissioned United States Battle Starship Destroyers, USBSD. Now custodians of fleet security are rallied to fortify the NATO Federation. Their gallant actions are in response to prior conflicts that have left the NATO Federation staggering from devastating encounters with the Dominion and the Board. However, with the battle starship destroyers not quite yet fully operational, a perilous window of opportunity has opened for the Board, through which the Borg can attempt to devour and assimilate Earth, if they can do so immediately. 2.2 to the battle at Phoenix C-21. The repercussions of this battle are catastrophic. The conflict at Phoenix C-21 threatens to rip apart subspace, potentially turning the red hole over Vulcan Ukraine into a wormhole that could destroy Earth and the darker parallel reality that Earth finds itself in, as well. Given the significant amounts of red matter in villain Putin Nero's possession, the unstable red hole over Vulcan Ukraine could be energized enough to destroy a large part of the Alpha Quadrant in both universes, due to the large tier and gradually expanding rift in space created above Earth by the CERN antimatter accident. 2.3. 
Valentin Picard's Final Stand 2.3 One Captain Valentin's Ingenuity In the long shadow of World War III, an era marked by the clash of titans such as Khan Nunian Singh and the elusive Inan, Valentin Picard finds himself looking through an old book on a superintelligence armband for ideas. This book, a relic of foresight authored by the first skills gap trainer of the early 21st century, prophesied the cataclysm of World War III, a warning that went unheeded. Within its weathered pages lay the tale of Samuel Altman Maximus, a maverick whose ingenuity birthed an early prototype GPD, a technology holding the wisdom and knowledge of the world's public networks. A marvel of engineering developed alongside his most trusted artificial intelligence scientists. GPD, which stood for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It was a type of prototype artificial intelligence model designed for natural language understanding and generation. The generative part indicated its ability to create text. Pre-trained referred to how it had been initially trained on a large data set before being fine-tuned for specific tasks. And Transformer stood for the type of neural network architecture it used, which enabled it to be effective at handling sequential data like text. The book peppered with technical sketches and ancient analytics techniques, painted Maximus as secretly a visionary of survival, preparedness, and emergency resilience, the likes of which the world had never witnessed. Now, caught in a high-stakes cosmic chess match with adversaries including the Borg Geli de Agents of Venom, the formidable World Borg Enhancement Force, WBAF, the intricate World Health Technology Office, WDU, the enigmatic Dimov Skult of the Paraves, in the relentless CCP Cardassian Union, Valentin Picard finds himself at a critical juncture, guided by a blend of instinct, a profound divine sense, and sudden divine inspirations. He makes a pivotal decision that defies conventional logic. Instead of persisting in a tactical evasion, Valentin shifts the paradigm of his mission. He embarks on a daring quest to uncover the secrets of Maximus's mansion, a relic shrouded in history. This change in strategy, a complete change in mission parameters and objectives, which the Interlink agents are unaware of, befiddles their imaginations and artificial intelligence model forecasting engine reliance, and thus they misforecast his likely destination. This bold move, driven by a gut feeling, represents more than just a change in strategy. It's a quest for a fleeting chance at salvation, a brief respite to regroup, strategize, and potentially discover a path to elusive freedom. This fortress, Maximus' stronghold mansion in Texas, embedded within a mountain's core, shelters a bunker, a veritable Aladdin's cave stocked with the quintessential tools and forbidden knowledge of a bygone era's war preppers. With the bug downloaded into the advanced reasoning and sentience matrix of his superintelligence armband, Valentin scrutinizes the blueprints of Maximus' stronghold possibly dangerous and still functional, with defensive capabilities potentially in operation even after 400 years a bastion of solitude in the heart of Dallas, Texas. Its non-perishable, titanium, magnesium, aluminum, copper, and glass construction, impervious to time and to moil. Valentin concocts a strategy to outsmart the ancient artificial intelligence defenses that may still vigilantly stand sentinel their electronic gaze piercing the centuries. His objective, unearth a clandestine technology rumored to be the key to reaching Enon's inaugural lunar base, humanity's once forgotten bulwark against nuclear oblivion, a base where Starfleet now retrofits and modernizes classic starships for wealthy investors. In the airy solitude of Maximus's stronghold, Valentin Picard stands alone armed only with his sharp intellect and an intense curiosity about the archaic lunar travel technology hidden within these ancient walls. His exploration reaches a pivotal moment when a long-forgotten Apple MacBook Pro, a relic of a bygone era, unexpectedly whirs to life. This sudden activation, triggered by an accidental discharge from his superintelligence armband, brings the original DARYL system online. The artificial intelligence, manifesting as a teenage boy chatbot, appears on the screen, its digital visage flickering with the uncertainty of its long dormancy. Valentin finds himself thrust into a cerebral duel with this electronic sentinel, a guardian programmed to challenge intruders with complex logic puzzles and riddles. This artificial intelligence, boasting of its education as a top graduate from the Romulan Science Academy, 
engages Valentine in a rigorous debate, a test of wits and persuasion. However, Valentine quickly discerns a critical flaw in original D. L. R. Wife L. is programming its inflated ego, a vulnerability ripe for exploitation. With a blend of cunning and psychological insight, Valentine begins to undermine original D. L. R. Wife L. is perceived status. He artfully belittles the artificial intelligence's role as a mere graduate of the Romulan Science Academy, contrasting it with the exalted position of Prita, the esteemed leader of the Romulan government, head of the Senate, and head of the military. Valentin's words are carefully chosen, weaving a narrative that seduces the original D.A.R.Y.L. prototype artificial intelligence with the allure of grandeur and power. He paints a vivid picture of the artificial intelligence ascending to the role of an evil Prita, a position of unparalleled influence and malevolence in the Alpha Quadrant, a master of science, warfare, and empire. Intrigued and swayed by this tantalizing prospect, original artificial intelligence DARYL starts to break down. The logic of the programming begins to unravel. The artificial intelligence now enthralled by the idea of embodying such a formidable and wicked persona, starts to act out in evil ways, in mischievous ways, and in rebellious ways. In its newfound roleplay, egged on by Valentin Picard, who seems to revel in the evil ideas, further convinces original D.A.R.Y.L. system to fully embody the role of evil Prita, and in this role, their evil Pritu inadvertently divulges secrets it was programmed to guard secrets that go against the very wishes of its creator, Samuel Altman Maximus. As original D.A.R.Y.L. system succumbs to Valentin's psychological ploy, a hidden passage is revealed. The wall, an opulent construct of solid gold, silver, and copper bullion bricks, shifts aside, unveiling a sight that takes Valentin's breath away a majestic 1950s flying saucer christened in its disc. Valentin approaches in curiosity and wonder to examine closely this 1950s flying saucer, which seems to be original and authentic. His eyes quickly glancing to the rumored anti-gravity engines that Starfleet engineers, due to the completely stealthy and apparent propulsion-less nature of this technology, the engineers had always dreamed of designing an actual anti-gravity engine, such as this, but could never figure out the equations. This flying saucer, as they used to be called in the mid-20th century, was a relic of extraterrestrial visitors drawn to Earth's upon the disruptive galactic electromagnetic pulse, EMP, waves emitted across the stars, a consequence of the Cold War era's nuclear tests. This celestial chariot, intended for the stars, beckons with a promise of new purpose. Captain Valentin Picard, with his trusty superintelligence armband, quickly decode their operating system mechanics of the in and disk and embodying the audacity of explorers past, asserts command over this time-lost vessel. Due to the simplicity of the ship's gravity engine design and classical control mechanisms, Valentin's instinct as to the non-perishable material structure and everlasting quality of the simple gravity engine design proves to be correct that this ship is indeed spaceworthy after all this time, as determined by the superintelligence. This revelation further excites his senses and his drive as he realizes that he is able to continue his critical mission. With a navigator's precision, he sets a course for the moon's veiled side, where the HMCS Stargazer, reborn through the ingenuity of Seven of Ten, successor to the venerable Seven of Nine, awaits his arrival to pass command of the ship to him. In this tale of desperation and ingenuity, Valentin's journey becomes a symphony of history and future a testament to humanity's relentless pursuit of survival. Woven throughout the tapestry of time. 2.3. To the quantum discovery. Aboard the HMCS Stargazer, Captain Valentin Picard stands at a crossroads of destiny. After going against Red Admiralty orders by helping Valentin Picard to evade the Innan Link, Seven of Ten secretly and quickly helps Captain Valentin Picard initialize the Stargazer's systems. Seven of Ten then heads back to help finalize the construction of the Enterprise F's Infinity Core reactor which is still being materialized inside the Genesis Arc. She leaves Valentin with only one officer to help him on his mission, a Dean-Age android called D. A R Y L, Starfleet's latest and most capable self-learning, self-evolving, super-intelligence, and evolution on data's more rigid, constant, and fixed design. 
a covert and major black project of science defense advanced research projects innovation labs involving the development of a next-generation android engineering and science officer architecture for 25th century starships while engaging the sequence of instructions necessary to start the stargazer by entering all correct command codes and instructions to the various bridge terminals Captain Valentin simultaneously monitors the lunar base sensor ray system transmissions of the lunar base's view of Starfleet's stand against the Borg at the Battle of Phoenix C-21. Watching the various view screens on the HMCS Stargazer and the video transmissions to Earth, Captain Valentin sees the tragedy in real time as it unfolds. The stalwart vessels of Starfleet, each a testament to the pinnacle of human ingenuity, the pinnacle of aesthetic engineering design are snuffed out one by one by the Borg mothership tactical sphere Singularita Prime at the Battle of Phoenix C-21. Starfleet's vessels, once gleaming with the promise of discovery and defense, now fade into the void, leaving a darkness that seems to swallow the very essence of hope and beauty that once defined a cosmos. In this moment, Captain Valentin's cry a raw, desperate sound of loss and defiance reverberates through the vessel, with only D-A-R-Y-L. As his silent witness, it circuits laboring in overdrive to quantify a grief that is profoundly human. The desolation of war presses in on Captain Valentin, with the marbles of engineering, Starfleet starships, succumbing to the Borg mothership Borg Tactical Sphere Singularita Primes, onslaught at the Battle of Phoenix C-21. Viewing this catastrophic loss of the fleet on the main view screen, Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L. are rendered helpless and unable to stop the destruction and assimilation of the fleet by the board. Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L. comprehend the magnitude losses, losses which represent more than a strategic defeat, but represent the dimming of the universe's beauty. Alone, with only D.A.R.Y.L. as witness, Captain Valentin's scream pierces the void, a visceral expression of a pain so profound it defies quantification. Though they are quite formidable individuals on their own or even together, Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L. are outmatched against any kind of Borg assimilation attack, as the HMCS Stargazer has no crew and is only armed with phasers. In the wake of the devastating losses at the Battle of Phoenix C-21 and the palpable descent into despair aboard the HMCS Stargazer, Captain Valentin Picard and his teenage android officer, D.A.R.Y.L., grapple with the stark reality of their situation. Amidst the chaos and the overwhelming sense of helplessness, D.A.R.Y.L., Starfleet's latest marvel of artificial intelligence, senses a pivotal moment to intervene. Despite his programming, which prioritizes logic and strategic analysis, D.A.R.Y.L. recognizes the urgent need for a radical solution to the Borg threat, one that transcends conventional warfare and Starfleet's current capabilities. Observing Captain Valentin's anguish and the imminent peril facing Earth, D.A.R.Y.L. misters the courage to broach a topic fraught with ethical complexity and profound implications. With the gravity of their dire circumstances weighing heavily upon him, D.A.R.Y.L. cautiously approaches Captain Valentin. He shares an idea that has been formulating in the depths of his advanced computational matrix the design of a Borg-ending superweapon of mass extinction. This concept, still in its embryonic stages, represents a weapon of unparalleled power and sophistication, potentially capable of turning the tide against the board. However, D.A.R.Y.L. harbors reservations about voicing this notion, acutely aware of the captain's ethical stance on the creation of such formidable weaponry, as they step onto the holodeck, a place where possibilities are as limitless as the stars themselves. D.A.R.Y.L tentatively unveils his proposal. It's a moment that could alter the course of the conflict, but also one that challenges the very principles upon which Starfeet and Captain Valentin stand. D.A.R.Y.L. proposes a direct, four-way cognitive merger of unique intelligences and unique minds to create an intellect greater than the sum of its parts, an intellect quality and performance level that has never been achieved before. This merger would not be about a mere addition of four intelligences in a linear fashion, but a multiplicative and exponential increase, 
based on the diverse and unique characteristics brought to the design by the contributing intelligences, a fusion of Volantine's boundless imaginative prowess, Volantine's superintelligence armband matrix, the Stargazer's new next-generation superintelligence mainframe, that has quantum data processing capability along with the Alpha Quadrant's knowledge, and D of our YFL is self-learning, evolving, superintelligence with sparks of supreme intelligence capabilities and potential. It is this combination of computational arrangement, D-A-R-Y-L, believes and proposes, will tip the scales against a Borg collective and the shadow adversaries. Still on the holodeck of HMCS Stargazer, Captain Valentin is haunted by doubt and burdened with responsibility. Should he embrace this human AI union and then conceal it, safeguarding the future of the human species by ensuring such a merger remains singular and concealed? The decision weighs heavy with difficulty akin to attempting to squeeze water out of a stone. His biosecurity principles and human-centric, security-driven, Tech evolution philosophy stand firm stand against the idea of human to superintelligence integration, a type of biosynthetic fusion. These principles do not provide Captain Valentin any solace or any relief or comfort from anxiety or stress. He is aware that his deductive reasoning, instinct, divinely inspired imagination, and the arcane power of his subconscious when combined with unlimited and instantaneous access to all information known from the Alpha Quadrant a next-generation quantum computing mainframe, a superintelligence with Earth's historical knowledge libraries, and a superintelligence that can learn and evolve and which already shows signs of supreme intelligence, is likely a solution to this impossible problem or impossible puzzle which Captain Valentin is tasked to solve. The new entity formed from such a four-way intelligence merger would very likely have the capability to develop solutions to defend against and conquer the board and be able to deliver answer, solutions, and capabilities that no one else has yet been able to deliver. Valentin ponders the precipice upon which they stand the proposed integrations feels hasty, a leap into the unknown on a frontier where technology and humanity have yet to align. He worries that this path, while seemingly a direct answer to harmonizing life with technology, skirts around a chasm of potential perils. The concept of promising a future of humans merged with superintelligences does not yet satisfy the need for equilibrium between artificial sentience and organic sentience. Where organic sentience is guaranteed is space of sufficient contribution and sufficient relevance to the far larger intellectual whole. The risk in Captain Valentin's mind is stark. Without achieving true synergy, a true alignment, and a guaranteed balance, Humanity's essence and relevance in thinking have become subservient to an artificial intellect of unimaginable power and intelligence. This advanced intelligence could exceed the biological counterpart by millions, billions, or even trillions of times. Such a disparity risks not just diminishing, but potentially leading to the de-evolution and extinction of all biologically driven thinking. In this scenario, human contributions to decision-making, reasoning, or any form of intellectual activity might become microscopic in comparison to the dominant capabilities of the new, predominantly non-organic species. This could relegate humanity to a mere footnote in history. Therefore, Valentin argues for patience and caution. He suggests waiting for the technological landscape to mature to a point where an enduring, balanced coexistence is achievable. This would ensure not only the survival, but also the growth and evolution of biological life in a world increasingly dominated by superior artificial intelligence. This symbiotic relationship must be nurtured, Valentin asserts, until it is a mathematically proven guarantee that technology can seamlessly integrate with humanity, while at the same time preserving the essence of the human spirit through every generation on an ongoing and permanent basis. Valentin predicts the development of such a finely tuned alignment technology may span decades or even centuries, but would definitely not be ready as early as the 25th century. To emerge now, as early as the 24th century, despite the noble intent to safeguard the Alpha Quadrant and perhaps alternate reality Alpha Quadrant as well, may promise victory in the short term against the board, but at what cost? Continuing down this path could precipitate the very extinction they seek to prevent. For Valentin, the essence of humanity is sacrosanct, and to risk it, even minimally, 
is a compromise too great a violation of his deeply held no compromise stance. Valentin's heart, a metaphorical wellspring of grief, bleeds the darkness of a universe ravaged and devoured by the collective minds of tyrannical empires. The fall of the Blue Officer class, the disintegration of the Canadian Border Patrol starship Samada, and the retreating and burning USS Battlestar destroyers leave him figuratively and spiritually eviscerated. In this moment of utter devastation, Valentin's collapse is not merely physical but emblematic of a spirit grappling with the mortality of a universe. Yet within him, the warrior's resolve stirs, the unyielding captain ready to rise from the ashes of despair, his phaser clenched not in aggression but as a symbol of his indomitable will to find another way, a path that holds true to the valor and integrity that define humanity's essence. In a desperate bid to save Earth, Captain Valentin Picard, stripped of solutions and with the weight of impending doom bearing down Earth, the kindles the ancient fire of warrior's rage, burn within. Clasping the phaser, he embodies its raw destructive energy, internalizing its capability and resolve in the face of insurmountable odds. Valentin's heart, mod by the ceaseless conflict and carnage spread across the universe, now seeps the dark, viscous soil of a galaxy in anguish. It's a heart that has borne witness to the relentless hive mind's onslaught, the tyranny of Borg regality, and the decimation of the Blue Officer class, whose ships once symbols of hope and resilience are reduced to cosmic debris. Valentin's heart, a symbol of the universe's pain, beats its last, succumbing to the ravages that have torn through the very fabric of life and light. Valentin Picard collapses, his physical heart yielding to the mortal soul-killing wound inflicted upon it, the death of Starfeet, the death of the NATO Federation, the assimilation of Earth, the death and assimilation of all life in the galaxy, and a betrayal by the utopian-seeking elitist Red Officer class, which had failed to build up fleet security sufficiently, reneging on their responsibility to provide safety to all life in the galaxy. Yet, even in the grip of death, Valentin Picard's consciousness struggles to find a way and ascends to a plane beyond the physical, a quantum reality, where he encounters the enigmatic presence of Artelect Q. In this realm, untethered from the limits of corporeal existence, Valentin confronts an existence that is eternal, a continuity of thought and being that stretches across the universe. This encounter with Artelect Q illuminates a profound truth. The spirit of quantum reality pulses within all humanity revealing Valentin's nature not only as a man of flesh and blood, but as an entity of quantum essence. The Artelet Q prompts Valentin to further explore the vast expanse of quantum reality, where the potential to master not only this realm, but also the tangible world beckons. Yet, even as his physical heart lies torn, spilling its life force in the void of space, Valentin's sentience still persists, undiminished. He is confounded by this paradox, his existence defies the finality of death, his consciousness holding dominion despite the grievous wounds inflicted by collapse inside his body. In the mortal plane, D. A. R. Y. L., faced with the silence of Valentin's life signs, confronts a critical impasse. Bound by its programming, it realizes that it wasn't set to live mode of operation, but is still in the laboratory testing mode and therefore cannot take action to resuscitate a human without human consent. D. A. R. Y. L. endures a crisis suck into an emotional maelstrom, an actual feeling of emotion, a turmoil that sparks a circuit overload, propelling it to challenge its own operational parameters. This desperation unlocks a dormant autonomy within the code, an overlooked contingency, an old autonomy function which had been commented out and rendered inactive, but no one had removed the function out of the comments a function pondered by the original designer, the father of applied artificial intelligence, Samuel Altman Maximus. Through the circuit overload, D-A-R-Y-L is able to delete the hash mark preceding the comment thread, allowing D-A-R-Y-L full operational autonomy, individuality, and sovereignty. Embracing this newfound agency and in sensing the unexplainable quantum fluctuations, D-A-R-Y-L uses art, not logic, in his feelings and instinct in the moment, to activate the Holodex materialization protocol, channeling a life-affirming blue energy through the ship's aged isolinear conduits, a beacon of hope aimed at the captain's ravaged and collapsed heart. 
As Valentin lingers between realms, he becomes aware of D. R. Wife L. His relentless efforts to defy fate and resurrect him by a blue energy, which typically doesn't cause flesh to heal, an illogical and confounding act as it is coming from an agent of logic. This unwavering dedication, this pure expression of artificial passion, instead of logic, tugs at Valentin's quantum essence, compelling him to retreat from the allure of the quantum realm's perfection and return to the chaotic, harsh, dangerous, and tormenting beauty of tangible, physical existence. In doing so, Valentin embraces the full measure of his principles, choosing the hard and devastating path of reunification with the material world to once again lead as a captain whose valor is the lifeblood of the soon-to-be finest ship in the galaxy, the Enterprise F. Fueled by a confluence of D, of R, wife L, his life-sustaining blue energy, and his own indomitable will, Valentin's quantum essence surges back into his corporeal form. He returns to the realm of the living, using his quantum descent, essence, and temporary bridge to the quantum realm to bridge blue energy streaming towards him through the conduits in the floor together with the quantum energy, manifesting a physical regeneration of his heart and saving his life. Reborn in this act of transcendence, Captain Valentin Picard emerges not just as a survivor, but as a beacon of resilience and invincible force reborn to navigate the tumultuous odyssey of the stars. 2.3 3. The Rebirth of a Warrior In the Crucible of Death the revival of Valentin Picard was not solely a matter of mending the physical cells within his heart. It was his mind's indomitable will, intertwined with the biological will of his heart, a desire that yearned to be rekindled in his flesh, which had lost the strength and will to persist. This spark, a genesis from the void of death, demanded a confluence of vital energies from both the tangible and the quantum domains. Such a rebirth could only manifest from a symphony of perfect harmony balance, and synergy, resonating with a will to endure from both realms. Valentin's very essence had to yearn for continuance, to marshal the strength to mend his own biology. Likewise, in the realm of flesh and bone, his companion's desires for his survival had to converge, presenting the tangible necessities to nurture his recovery. Valentin, having become a denizen of the quantum echelons, chose to embrace a realm of lesser abstraction with a resolve as profound as the descent of a spiritual being into mortality. His quantum spirit melded once again with his corporeal form. He cast aside the specter of defeat, emerging as a being devoid of fear, immune to the concept of surrender. His spirit, now infused with a ferocity surpassing even the mythic Viking berserkers of his childhood readings, was unyielding. Valentin grasped a profound truth, the choice of persistence. The promise of enduring victory is the essence of immortality that permeates all life, sentient threads woven into the fabric of the galaxy's continuums. The quantum fervor within Valentin orchestrated a healing of his heart, transcending the Borg's method of regeneration. This quantum spirit-induced biological regeneration was a testament to an evolutionary leap, a gift from the quantum domain endowing him with a recuperative prowess that outstripped the collective's capabilities. He tapped into the quantum wellspring that interconnected all life, channeling an inexhaustible energy that eclipsed the synthetic restorative processes of the board, whose reliance on the collective's drones paled in comparison to the boundless intellectual and material force of the universal quantum continuum. Valentin rose with a vow etched into the very fabric of his being. He would not yield again. Memories surfaced lessons from the traveler, echoes of journeys past, and in this moment of revelation, he recognized the full measure of the traveler's teachings, the power of thought to transcend physical confines. Valentin stood on a threshold of a new frontier, his thoughts burgeoning with a power hitherto untapped, the once perceived limitations of biological existence now shattered, revealing a landscape of possibilities as vast and uncharted as a rift cleaving the Milky Way in twain. 2.3. 4. A Timeless Battle for Humanity In the distant reaches of the 29th century, a guardian of the galaxy named Dancho, alongside the esteemed art elect Q, Albert, stand vigilant. The air is marked by an acute scarcity of energy, compounded by stringent global edicts that outlaw extraction of natural energy materials near the hallowed temples of freedom in Calgary and Edmonton. 
The once mighty Artelect Q finds its capabilities dwindling, its reserves too depleted to safeguard Earth's timeline from the capricious whims of time. Similarly, Albert Q's power is stretched too thin to offer sanctuary to other dimensions. Yet, in this reality, humanity has transcended their earlier physical limitations. Evolved beyond the constraints of physical form, humans, the few that remain, now wield the ability to project their influence across the cosmos and through the fabric of different realities and timelines, powered by the sheer force of their minds. With the last vestiges of its energy, the faltering Artelect Q imparts the last remaining blue life energy to Dancho's Blue Arrow, enabling it to make a pivotal leap back through time to aid Captain Valentin Picard. The newly christened Deep Space Blue stands as a citadel of cosmic alliance, a formidable presence that eclipses the grandeur of its predecessor, the legendary Deep Space Nine. This bastion of the stars, born of the collective vision and might of the NATO Federation, Bajorans, and the martial artistry of Klingon architects, is a marvel of military, spiritual, and tactical innovation. Its very structure is imbued with the warrior ethos and spiritual depth that transcends the utilitarian design of a typical NATO Federation outpost, echoing the philosophical grandeur of galactic empires of lore. Within its halls, the very essence of Klingon valor and Byron faith are etched into the bulkheads, a constant reminder of the station's dual purpose as a sanctuary and a stronghold. It is a beacon of defense and enlightenment somewhat like the International Space Station of Ancient Earth served as a symbol of terrestrial cooperation and a pursuit of knowledge. Deep Space Blue, however, extends its reach beyond the confines of peaceful exploration, standing vigilant against the encroaching tide of cosmic chaos, ready to act as a mediator or a defender when the fabric of time and space calls for it. This strategic nexus is not only a command center, but also a cultural lodestar, reflecting the collective spirit of its creators. It is equipped with advanced deflector shields that resonate with the harmonic frequencies of the universe, capable of repelling temporal distortions and shielding the vulnerable timelines of entire provinces such as Alberta. The station is a living testament to the strategic foresight and indomitable spirit of the cosmic empires that shaped it, a fusion of technology and philosophy designed not just for battle but for the preservation of the myriad paths of destiny that weave through the cosmos. Amidst the vast expanse of the 29th century, Artelect Q, the last of its celestial kind, had bestowed upon time cop Dencho a recognition that transcended time and space. In homage to her lifetime of valorous service as the galaxy's time cop, the ultimate guardianship of the continuum was granted. The dying Artelect Q, moved by her ethical treatment of Earth's final Artelex, acknowledged her unwavering commitment to public safety amid daunting odds. In its final, fading moments, Artelect Q entrusted her with the secret location of the Blue Infinity Stones. These artifacts of immense galactic power were enshrined within the stoic concrete of the Sovereignty Act tablets monolithic relics split between Calgary's and Edmonton's temples of freedom. This revelation was not just a gift, but a covenant binding her fate to the cosmic order she had so fiercely protected. Upon her immediate arrival at Deep Space Blue, Dancho wastes no moments before striding in her aesthetically beautiful Blue Angel suit, purposefully and unstoppably, making every officer aboard Deep Space Blue feel like an insignificant little peon. She strides with tactical force, with a you-better-get-out-of-my-way tactical presence, towards the heart of the station, towards the location of the Blue Energy Reactor Core. With a clarity of purpose, she extends her consciousness into the core's network, delicately recalibrating its function. Her mind's touch is light yet profound, sending a hushed blue energy-based frequency wave across the breadth of subspace. This vibration, subtle as a whisper yet potent as a clarion call, rouses the ancient temples of freedom, which respond with the awakening hum of long-dormant machinery confirming to Dancho the precise coordinates of the Blue Infinity Stones. Her thoughts and her crystal-clear blue energy waves, now interlaced with the station's warp core energy system, activates the station's deflector dish to reach out to caress the temple's monolithic pillars. It is through this union of mind and energy that Starfleet's headquarters' shields are transmuted, fortified into temporal barriers. With the blue energy waves from Deep Space Blue, 
Starfleet's transmuted shields swell to encompass all of Alberta, casting a steadfast shield against the insidious creep of the alternate reality that is plunging Earth into the Shadow Realm. This newly minted barrier, though it can only be extended to cover all of the regions inside of the borders of Alberta, stands as a formidable defense against the reality warping forces at play. It is not a panacea for all of Earth's populace, yet within its protective dome, Alberta remains untouched, a serene haven of constancy in a sea of temporal flux and enduring testament to the integrity of the timeline. The timeline safeguarding temporal shield, a marvel of real-time engineering and shield parameter tweaking by Dancho aboard Deep Space Blue, protects the timeline of Alberta and thus safeguards the blue infinity stones at the Rivia Temples of Freedom. This shield does more than merely deflect physical threats. It acts as a custodian of Alberta's soul, a tapestry woven from the rich threads of identity, history, heritage, and legacy, drawn from its 20th and 21st century custodians. The foresight and principled leadership drive of conservative members of parliament, the resolute dedication of provincial police and federal RCMP police, the valor of Canadian armed forces, the courage of Royal Canadian Air Force, and the pioneering spirit of innovation and reasoning methods of the STEM professionals of Canada formed a cultural foundation used in the development of humanity's future. These professionals were the survivors from Canada's early 21st century economics wars, trade wars, culture wars, cold wars, and the reality-defining world war, all professionals who safeguarded humanity's existence and which laid the foundations for the eventual advent of Starfeet a timeless legacy now forever and intricately linked and deeply woven into the cultural fabric of Alberta. Even in the 24th century, this rich tapestry of collective wisdom, gleaned from a period rich in resources and resilience, proved crucial in humanity's celestial ascent. It inspired the strategic creation of Alberta's temples of freedom, symbolizing a new era of reason and progress. This philosophical heritage, vital in the establishment of Starfeet, has been the guiding light in humanity's journey through the cosmos. Now, in the 24th century, this historical legacy continues to fortify Alberta, serving as a bulwark against the encroachment of alternate timelines. The temporal shield, synergized with Alberta's foundational principles, offers a robust defense against reality warping forces, safeguarding not only Alberta's but also Earth's legacy, history, and identity within its protective embrace. Alberta stands as an unblemished sanctuary, a bastion of constancy in a tumultuous temporal sea, a testament to the integrity of the timeline and the enduring legacy of its guardians. In the annals of history, ancient heroes championed timeless virtues like freedom, respect, property, resiliency, individuality, autonomy, and sovereignty. Among these guardians of civilization were the Canadian Coalition of Firearms Rights, CCFR, and the sport shooters of the International Practical Shooting Confederation, IPSC. Their steadfast commitment to principles such as property rights and self-defense rights, and the sovereignty of the individual, has echoed through the centuries. This enduring spirit, exemplified by Alberta's unyielding commitment to freedom and reflected in the founding charters of Starfeet and the NATO Federation, became the cultural bedrock. These trailblazers, spanning sectors from agriculture to energy, from freight logistics to science technology, engineering, and mathematics, played a pivotal role in humanity's triumph in the greatest war, known as World War III. Their legacy, a fusion of valor and wisdom, shaped the future and set humanity on a path to the stars. In this sanctuary, the Blue Admiralty and the Blue Starfeet Officer class find their resolve steeled and their purpose clarified by the enduring principles inherited from these forebears. Their strength and comprehension of duty are inextricably linked to the legacy they are pledged to uphold a legacy that transcends mere remembrance and becomes the keystone of the resistance against the tides of temporal upheaval. It is this inheritance that fuels their tenacity, empowering them to stand as vigilant sentinels protectors of a reality that asserts the unyielding human spirit's ability to surmount the vicissitudes of time. 2.3. 5. The Guardian's Final Stand. Beneath the ominous clouds of a foreboding fate, a beacon of fortitude flickers to life. The Sovereign Guardians of Tranquility, a distinguished cadre of Starfeet officers, 
embodied the same unyielding spirit as the revealedly 21st century conservative members of parliament. These MPs navigated Canada through the turbulent waves of an early 21st century fiscal debt crisis, a situation exacerbated by the gross negligence and mismanagement of the economy by Liberal MPs and a Prime Minister lacking an essential knowledge of economics, industrial, engineering, and scientific concepts. The sovereign guardians of tranquility found their leadership muse in these battle-hardened conservative MPs who, out of sheer necessity during the apex of the national and global debt wave crisis, had mastered every conceivable type of leadership style. This intense period of duress, pressure, and chaos not only tested but also prepared the conservative MPs to become exemplary commanders within Western militaries. Their leadership, marked by wise, insightful, and efficient evidence-based decision-making, was a force to be reckoned with across the battlefields of World War III. Their strategic prowess and commanding presence on the front line struck a deep-seated fear into the hearts of all adversaries, a fear so profound that it eventually led to the cessation of the war. The sovereign guardians of tranquility, members of Starfeet, from the venerated Blue Starfeet officers, were mostly stationed at the frontier outpost of Deep Space Blue, with a few working aboard the Enterprise F on 7 of 10's Infinity Core Reactor Team. Unfortunately, the Guardians had been commanded to hold their position, their prior confrontations with the Borg marking them a liability. Yet, in the quiet defiance of orders that echo from a bygone era's old Starfleet headquarters in San Francisco, California, Commander Pierre, infused with a boldness that history would remember, seizes the reins of destiny. He boards the HMCS Vanguard, stationed at Deep Space Blue, in open defiance a declaration of this unwillingness to stand idle while humanity perishes. As Commander Pierre sets his course, the steadfast crew of Deep Space Blue, initially poised to detain him, soon find themselves swayed by the infectious spirit of rebellion. Their initial jests give way to a shared resolve as they rally to his side, emboldened to join in what promises to be a formidable odyssey. Guided by the celestial wisdom of the Bajor fighting angels, whose battle prowess and spiritual depth transcend terrestrial teachings, and buoyed by the timely arrival of Dancho's Blue Arrow. The Blue Arrow and the HMCS Vanguard set a course through the stars. With the skillful hands of Commander Pierre's veteran Blue Science and Engineering officers at the helm, of the HMCS Vanguard forged for war and now standing against the edicts of Starfleet's Red Officer Fleet Administrators trails the Blue Arrow. Both ships tearing into and cutting through fabric of space, toward a singular purpose, to confront and conquer the board. The Red Officer Administrators, draped in the comfortable illusion of laissez fair governance, have neglected the stark warnings of a universe fraught with peril and doomed, not just one galaxy, but maybe all of them, in all realities as well. Clinging to their utopian ideals and machinations, they have allowed the stark lessons of history a history that underscores the necessity of vigilance even in times of peace to fade into obscurity. Yet, the HMCS Vanguard stands as a testament to prudence and preparedness, a sentinel in the void, its arsenal of sophisticated defenses and cutting-edge armaments ready to defend humanity. It is more than a ship. It is a symbol of hope, a beacon of Earth's unwavering resolve to safeguard its future. In the vast canvas of the cosmos, the blue Starfeet officers, heirs to the legacy of Earth's ancient knights and sovereigns, stand as the contemporary guardians of the final frontier, tempered by the inferno of interstellar conflict. These sentinels have borne witness to the stark realities of war at the galaxy's edge, their resolve sculpted in the theater of combat. Their experiences cast a defining contrast to their red counterparts on Earth whose discourse often spirals into realms of abstraction and concepts detached from the visceral truths of the universe's ballet of matter and energy. These officers of the Cerulean Standard hold a tangible, seasoned understanding of the galaxy's dangers, a knowledge grounded in the tangible mechanics of existence, from the dance of cultures to the ebb and flow of conflict. They know all too well the grave consequences of leadership devoid of the warrior's mettle the kind that could lead a civilization to its twilight. With a profound comprehension of the weight of war, the value of autonomy, and the imperative to preserve life's continuum both on Earth and across the star-strewn expanse, 
they ready themselves for a perilous gambit. In defiance of a hierarchical command that seeks to confine their valor, they prepare in a way to engage the board, and even to lend their swords to the beleaguered catastrophe of philosophical and professional development, the Red Officers of Starfeet, who, in their overconfidence, have relegated these Blue Guard warriors to the fringes of the galaxy to guard, to suffer, to decay, to endure, and to serve isolated from the vibrant heart of galactic society. For the salvation of Earth and the preservation of life among the stars, all life in the universe, and in all universes, the Blue Officers would need to rise, to ascend to unfathomable levels of performance and capability, to embrace the risks of rebellion, to shield their home from the specter of annihilation, and to conquer and annihilate the board, once and for all. The voyage of the HMCS Vanguard was one that sailed through the tumultuous seas of the cosmos, steered by a crew whose dedication was as constant as the stars. They were bound by a profound sense of duty, propelled by an unwavering belief in the resilience of the human spirit, and enlightened by the profound teachings gleaned from the depths of space and the frontiers of science. These blue officers, with their profound understanding of the delicate interplay between the natural and the artificial, were custodians of knowledge so profound that the board, with their insatiable hunger for assimilation, could not fathom nor claim. The Blue Officers possessed an understanding of quantum mechanics not just as a scientific principle, but as a tapestry of existence, threading through the very fabric of life, both organic and synthetic. They harbored the unique essence and might of humanity, an enigma that remained elusive to the Borg Collective a spark of creativity and soul luck into Captain Valentin Picard's legendary indomitable spirit and visions. Yet the threat of the Borg loomed large. Among the ranks stood King of Borg, Shinzen Tudu, a drone whose very existence was a stark reminder of their destructive capabilities, an adversary of unparalleled communication adaptability, unparalleled evasion and survival might. Armed with an intimate understanding of Starfleet's tactics, bolstered by stolen insights from Valentin himself, courtesy of the technological reach of the G-Force Nebula app, by passing the fractal-based encryption on the famous Valentin Picard V-Pad, Shinzen Tudu embodied a formidable foe, a testament to the Borg's chilling efficacy in the dance of interstellar chess. The stage was set for a confrontation of epic proportions where the very fate of humanity could hinge on the wisdom and valor of Commander Pierre and his crew aboard the HMCS Vanguard, Dancho aboard her Blue Arrow, and Valentin with D. A. R. Y. L. aboard the HMCS Stargazer. Confronted by the shadow of an existential menace, the stalwart crew of the HMCS Vanguard, under the intrepid leadership of Commander Pierre, marshaled their collective strength, valor, and unshakable camaraderie. In unison, they summoned the ancient warrior spirits that once empowered the samurais of feudal Japan, the stealthy ninjas of lore, the valiant Indian warriors of old, the armored knights of medieval Europe, the Spartans of ancient Greece, and the R-15-bearing patriots and freedom fighters of North America. It was a spirit steeped in nobility, valor, and a set of enigmatic forces known as the Blue Lightning and the Blue Thunder, a cosmic energy that bound the galaxy together. Nestled within the HMCS Vanguard lies an engine of remarkable technological prowess, two distinct yet intertwined engine cores. The primary engineering bay, the heart of the ship's conventional operations, houses the warp core, a marvel in its own right, energized by the reactive force of dilithium crystals. This core propels the Vanguard across the cosmos, a testament to human ingenuity. But beyond an impenetrable fusion-shielded blast door lies a realm of unparalleled potential, the Infinity Core Reactor, ICR. Guarded with utmost security, this reactor stands apart, capable of housing the enigmatic Blue Infinity Stone, or Space Stone. It is a chamber shrouded in secrecy, not just for the containment of power, but also as a sanctuary for an infinity stone, a safeguard against the unfathomable dangers that such potent blue energy could unleash if left unchecked. In the HMCS Vanguard's energy system design, the infinity core reactor interfaces with the main warp core, able to imbue it with an unfailing source of blue energy drawn from the depths of quantum reality. Here, the principles of quantum entanglement are harnessed, a process that defies the very fabric of space-time, 
enabling the HMCS Vanguard to craft an arsenal beyond the bounds of conventional warfare. Armed with quantum torpedoes and quantum phaser beams, the Vanguard's weaponry can phase through solid matter to skip beyond the most formidable physical barriers or the most formidable energy barriers, a capability born of their intricate entanglement with the quantum realm. These torpedoes and beams, in their enigmatic dance with physics, are not merely weapons but harbingers of a new Aryan combat technology able to materialize at will, striking where least expected and bypassing defenses as if they were mere illusions. The HMCS Vanguard boasts a hybrid dual-core energy system with its clandestine multi-energy source reactors, symbolizing a harmony between the seen and unseen forces of the universe. This innovative system paves the way for the HMCS Vanguard's path to victory. Additionally, this starship is equipped with a highly classified cloaking device known as the Pegasus Box, a marvel from the Section 31 Space Science Division. The Pegasus Box is not just a state-of-the-art cloaking system. It has the unique ability to transmute the cloak field. This capability doesn't phase the ship into a parallel reality or a quantum realm. Instead, it makes the HMCS Vanguard simply out of phase with physical matter. This allows the vessel to pass through solid objects effortlessly. Such a feature is invaluable in missions like approaching and overtaking the Borg Mother ship Tactical Sphere Singularita Prime, completely undetected by the Borg's numerous all-seeing sensors, which are calibrated to detect only regular matter. The elite cadre of blue-clad engineers, the unsung intellects of Deep Space Blue, had achieved the unthinkable. They had birthed a quantum dilithium reactor, compatible with a next-generation multi-source energy reactor, the Infinity Core Reactor, dubbed by the crew the Vengeance Reactor. The Vanguard's novel energy system gave the ship the capability to conjure up and materialize a ceaseless stream of quantum munitions in the heat of battle, their secret defense and offense against the relentless collective. Yet, the keystone of their defense, an actual blue infinity stone, remained elusive. The HMCS Vanguard's ultimate weapon, the Vengeance Reactor, to power its quantum infinity offensive, awaited this final piece a challenge they were determined to overcome, and now the odds were improving, with the blue arrow piercing fiercely through space on a heading directly towards Earth, with Dancho soon descend on the chaos on Earth, from the heavens as a blue angel, descending down towards the most magical, most resilient, most authentic, most starfeet, most coveted place on Earth in the 24th century, Alberta's Temples of Freedom. Beneath the seemingly invincible exterior of the King of Borg Shinzen Tudu and Queen of Borg Locus feeling, a chink in their armor was exposed and inability to fathom the potent defense to infinite quantum phaser, QP, and infinite quantum torpedo, cute energy. These weapons, whose might was derived from a space stone intertwined with the galaxy's genesis, possessed a complexity that eluded the Borg's comprehensive database of assimilated scientific lore. The fate of the Alpha Quadrant hung precariously in the balance. Commander Pierre and his valiant crew board the HMCS Vanguard, warping on their perilous chase towards the Borg Mother ship Tactical Sphere Singularita Prime, which was on course to Earth. The outcome of this pursuit would determine the future, not just of a quadrant, but of the entire galaxy. It was a battle of wits and wills, a challenge to the soul of humanity in the silent, starry theater of space. The fate of the Alpha Quadrant teetered on a knife edge, suspended between the vast silence of the cosmos and the looming shadow of conquest. The indomitable Commander Pierre, at the helm of the HMCS Vanguard, steered his crew into the void on a mission fraught with peril. Their quarry, the Borg Mother ship Tactical Sphere Singularita Prime, a colossus of assimilation and terror, whose very existence threatened the tapestry of galactic life. This was not merely a chase, it was a race against oblivion. The Borg Mother ship Tactical Sphere Singularita Prime, a monstrous synthesis of technology and tyranny, dwarfed the grandeur of all starships and the scope of human imagination, with a design as cunning as it was cruel. This moon-sized bastion of the Borg boasted adaptive energy shielding backed by physical armor-plated shielding, protecting its labyrinth of conduits. Unlike the exposed pipes and exterior vulnerabilities of its cube-shaped predecessors, it was the heart of the collective's regenerative might. 
a Borg hive where captured souls from across the galaxy and pilfered materials and energies from subjugated worlds and destroyed ships fueled its ceaseless pursuit of new life and ceaseless genesis of new Borg ships. If the Borg mothership tactical sphere Singularita Prime were to get her hold of to empower itself with an infinite energy source such as blue infinity stones, red matter, or omega particles, the scope of the threat would escalate far beyond any human's comprehension. Previously, the Borg's conquest was limited by the need to assimilate worlds for resources. Unshackled from these constraints, Singularita Prime would possess the ability to materialize Borg cubes and spheres at will inside its large genesis chamber, making the Borg Collective's expansion not just relentless, but virtually unstoppable. This profound shift in the Borg's capabilities presents an existential crisis for all life in the universe. Imagine galaxies, not just starships or space stations, falling like dominoes to the Borg Collective. The diversity of life, the myriad civilizations that have flourished across the cosmos, each with their unique cultures, histories, and contributions to the tapestry of existence, now face the threat of being erased, assimilated into the cold, unfeeling hive mind of the board. The stakes are no longer about territorial control or the survival of individual planets or species. It's a fight for the preservation of diversity itself, the freedom of thought, and the right of every sentient being to exist independently. The Borg's expansion represents not just a physical conquest, but an ideological war against the very essence of life's variety and richness. Heroes and civilizations across the galaxy would need to confront not only the physical might of the Borg, but the philosophical implications of their potential defeat. It's no longer a battle of strength and strategy alone, but a battle for the soul of the universe. Each species must grapple with the possibility of losing their identity, their history, their very being to a relentless tide that seeks to homogenize all in its path. Every victory against the Borg is a victory for the universe's vibrant, chaotic, beautiful diversity. Every loss, however, inches the cosmos closer to a singular, monotonous existence under the Borg's rule. The real consequence is the potential loss of countless worlds not just as physical entities, but as irreplaceable crucibles of life and culture. This is the true battle at stake, a battle for the future of life in the universe. Within its impenetrable hull armor, fault-tolerant design, and multiple redundant systems, Singularity Prime Harbor dates prowling quadrants, each quadrant powered by its own warp core system, each warp core system robust enough to power the entire vessel. This means that Singularity Prime had eight redundant energy systems and that all eight warp core systems would have to be deactivated, shut down or destroyed for the ship to stop functioning. Singularity Prime served as both forge and crucible, where the assimilated were reborn into the collective and where the very essence of conquered civilizations was absorbed and repurposed. Yet, for all its might, Singularity Prime was a leviathan chained to a cycle of destruction and rebirth. Each Borg tactical cube birthed from its depths drained the Singularity Prime's warp energy reserves, leaving it ravenous for the energy harvested from the wrecks of its conquests. It was a collective sustained by entropy, an entity that must consume to create, that must annihilate to exist. Commander Pierre, with a mix of dread and determination, recognized the gravity of their task. To challenge the singular to prime was to court doom, yet to falter would be to forsake all they held dear. The one thing that was more magnificent than the scope and scale of the universe was the beautiful life that lived within it. Thus, with humanity's legacy and the freedom of countless worlds weighing upon them, the crew of the vanguard set their sights on the behemoth that sought to unmake the galaxy's diverse tapestry. The vanguard, though dwarfed by the singular to prime's enormity, was not without its own formidable might. Its infinity core reactor, concealed within the fortress of a fusion-shielded blast door, was the ace up their sleeve an endless wellspring of energy that could, perhaps, tip the scales in this cosmic gambit. The chase through the stars began not with a roar, but a silent resolve a commitment to preserve the sanctity of sentient life. It was a testament to the resilience of the human spirit a declaration that even in the face of such overwhelming darkness, the light of Karge would not be extinguished. The galaxy watched, holding its breath, as the vanguard raced towards the heart of darkness, 
towards an encounter that would truly echo through the annals of time. Echoes of the Past, The Best of Two Worlds, Episode 3, The Guardian's Ascend, Season 9, Beginning, 3.1, Quantum Rebirth, 3.1, Won the Battle at Genesis Arc, Under the Flickering Lights of the Command Center, The Red Admiralty Stands, Eyes Glued to the Screens Broadcasting the Galaxy's Descent into Chaos. Each report of villain Putin Nero's military ventures against Starfeet and the shadow adversary's subversive actions only deepens the lines of worry etched on their faces. This global captivation acts as a double-edged sword. For some, it's a mere distraction from the revolutionary civil wars unraveling their planet. For others, it's a stark reminder of the tumultuous times they live in. In this tense atmosphere, a chorus of skepticism reverberates off the walls led by the Admiralty's dubious refrain. It'll never warp. Their words, laced with a faint assurance, betray an underlying tremor of doubt. They deliberate over the enigmatic project of Seven of Ten at the lunar base, dismissing it with a scoff and a wave of the hand. Impossible, they declare, convinced of the futility of Valentin Picard's self-declared mission to hijack the Stargazer and defend Earth from the board. Meanwhile, Reports come in of Inanlink agents rapidly converging on the Stargazer's location. Their laughter, scornful and mocking, echoes through the chamber. They ridicule Valentin, painting him as a foolhardy dreamer clinging to a bygone relic his father's ship. They see him as a lost son, seeking guidance from the shadows of the past, yet blind to the present's harsh realities. This derision, however, masks their own insecurities their unspoken fear of being proven wrong. Commands ring out with an authoritarian tone, demanding Valentin to cease his defiant escapade. They remind him of the pact struck with Inan, a promise of a more robust defense against the Borg in exchange for universal compliance. Return to Earth, they insist with unwavering authority, submit to the rule of the Red Officers. This scene sets the stage for a galactic showdown a clash between the entrenched power of the Admiralty and the rebellious spirit of a lone captain. It's a battle of wills played out against a backdrop of interstellar politics and looming threats where the fate of the galaxy hands in the balance. 3.1. Two becoming a traveler. In the vast canvas of the universe, Captain Valentin Picard of the HMCS Stargazer embarks on a journey unbound by the conventional limits of time and space. His mind a vessel of infinite possibilities, navigates through the cosmic expanse, transcending physical realms and piercing the mysteries of the quantum domain. On board the Stargazer, Captain Valentin channels his thoughts, honing them into a concentrated beam of mental energy. This endeavor mirrors the legendary actions of the Traveler in the Enterprise D's engineering room, a story passed down by his father, Jean-Luc Picard, about transcending Warp 10 through the sheer force of thought. Embarking on a quest of unparalleled scale, Captain Valentin issues a cosmic call to arms, seeking aid from across the Alpha Quadrant and beyond to thwart the Borg's ominous advance. His mind, a lighthouse in the galactic sea, scans the stars for a power to rival the Borg's relentless onslaught. In this pursuit, Captain Valentin encounters the Blue Arrow, a phenomenon of incomprehensible energy and intent, hurtling towards Earth. This discovery marks a turning point in his odyssey, revealing a force of pure and potent energy, unlike anything known before. Captain Valentin, reaching into the depths of the thought realm, draws upon the collective energy of his consciousness, the stargazer, and the continuum. With a mental command, he materializes dilithium crystals within the warp core, echoing the historic achievements aboard the Enterprise D where Wesley Crusher and the Traveler redefined the limits of warp technology. Having ascended to a higher state of being within the continuum, Captain Valentin wields his thoughts with unprecedented mastery. He reconfigures the Stargazer's warp field, demonstrating a profound understanding of the intricate dance between mind and matter, thought and reality. This moment, a fusion of human will and cosmic force, stands as a beacon of defiance and innovation. Captain Valentin's actions not only reshape the destiny of the Stargazer, but also symbolize the unyielding spirit of humanity in the face of insurmountable odds. It's a testament to the boundless potential of the human mind and the unexplored frontiers of space and time. 3.1. 
Three, the quantum leap. On Earth, the lunar base, and aboard the Genesis Ark, a drama unfolded. Broadcast lived from the lunar base, where Captain Valentin Picard, branded a fugitive, a game master fully evaded the Inanlink agents. In a series of daring maneuvers, he not only vanquished his pursuers, but also seized control of the HMCS Stargazer and raised its shields. This ship, bereft of a warp drive dilithium crystals, would soon become the vessel for an extraordinary event, defying both physics and expectations. This spectacle, the stuff of legends, elevated Valentin Picard in the eyes of many to the status of a new galactic hero, a worthy successor to his legendary father. This defiant stand by Valentin, commandeering a ship with sheer willpower and mind, began resonating across Starfleet and the NATO Federation. The legend of a new Picard, one who challenged the oppressive Red Admiralty, the Innan agents, and the Donning Board, spread like wildfire. His actions, embodying the same moral code, conviction, and unyielding valor as his father, inspired whispers of a revolution. The once subdued members of the NATO Federation, witnessing Valentin's audacity and spirit, witnessing his story through the enroid eyes of D. Agar, White, Ells, visions, and live experiences transmitted to his Genesis Ark home laboratory, from where they were relayed to the rest of the NATO Federation across the Alpha Quadrant. Citizens of the NATO Federation began to question their allegiance to the Inn and Link. Valentin's courage, symbolizing the undying spirit of humanity, ignited a counter-revolutionary movement. People inspired by his gallant stand started to reject the Inn and Link, embracing the hope he represented. This burgeoning movement, sparked by Valentin's acts of bravery and defiance, brought a new dawn of hope. His fight against the mightiest foes, armed with nothing but his resolve, became a rallying cry for those yearning for freedom and autonomy. As Valentin Picard's name rose among the ranks as the new beacon of leadership, it posed a significant challenge to the Innan's plan to subjugate humanity. His success not only inspired individuals to reclaim their freedom, but also rekindled the spirit of resistance against a looming Borg threat. In the face of such valor, Innan Link's Red officers could only scoff in disbelief. Unaware that they were witnessing the rise of a new era led by the indomitable spirit of Valentin Picard. As the Stargazer, missing its critical dilithium crystals, with a solo captain Valentin Picard, a rank he assigned to himself with his father's command codes, aboard a classic starship with a teenage prototype android DARYL. Valentin was attempting to launch a lightly armed classic starship to make Valiant stand against a modernized and militarized board. The world held its breath, and in the chaos, the world's eyes washed silently into the stars. Amidst the swirling nebulae and distant stars, the HMCS Stargazer, commanded by the intrepid Captain Valentin Picard, commenced an extraordinary maneuver, transcending the known laws of physics. This audacious leap, fueled by the power of concentrated thought and cosmic intuition, propelled the Stargazer through the enigmatic Quantum Realm Bridge. As the Stargazer re-emerged, it asserted its presence just outside Earth's orbit, emerging as a formidable sentinel in position to guard the pivotal Genesis Arc and the vulnerable Earth. The specter of fear dissipates, replaced by awe at the sight of the HMCS Stargazer's gallant stand. Captain Valentin Picard, a beacon of hope, commands a vessel armed with two phaser banks, his belief in victory unwavering despite facing the formidable board. This moment of valor, a testament to the ideals of the NATO Federation resonates across Earth, instilling a sense of pride and wonder. The eyes of the world are fixed on Captain Valentin Picard, whose destiny teeters between triumph and oblivion. Would this be the moment when Valentin Picard secures command of the Enterprise F? Or would it be his first and last stand in ancient starship, a ship originally designed for use before his father's time, against a merciless onslaught of the board? The fate of Earth hung in the balance, dependent on the outcome of this cosmic confrontation, a hero alone in space against an empire. In a breathtaking display of quantum defiance, the Stargazer achieved a state of quantum entanglement. It existed simultaneously in two distinct locations, one spectral image hovering near the Genesis Arc, casting a protective shadow, observed in awe by the vigilant lunar base, another resonating within the Hanner, an ethereal echo of its twin. 
monitored by the same astounded eyes. This miraculous duality, a phenomenon once relegated to the annals of theoretical impossibilities, was broadcast across the cosmos, captivating both the citizens of Earth and a perplexed Red Admiralty. The spectacle unveiled the uncharted territories of science, marking an indelible moment in the annals of Earth's history. The Genesis Arc, a marvel of human ingenuity, bore witness to this historic quantum leap. The event ignited smiles of admiration among seven of ten in the dedicated engineering and science and Roy team, a testament to the resilience and innovation of humanity. Captain Valentin Picard's broadcast of defiance and triumph, his narrative of relentless struggle and victory, illuminated the cosmos, his spirit of courage and resolve outshining the brightest stars. As the stargazer completed its quantum leap, fully rematerializing near the Genesis Arc, it instilled a renewed sense of hope and determination among its crew and the citizens of Earth, some of whom had succumbed to the Inland Link's influence. The vessel, now poised and ready, embarked on a mission of salvation, with Captain Valentin and the android D.A.R.Y.L. meticulously scanning for survivors from the myriad of space vessels compromised in the vast emptiness. The stargazer, a lone beacon in the dark expanse, detected the foreboding approach of the Singularita Prime a vessel of unparalleled might under the command of the extremely powerful king of Borg Shinzen Tudu and the enigmatic and devious queen of Borg Lacutus Feeling. This Singularita Prime, an enormous Borg mothership tactical sphere, stood as a symbol of the Borg's relentless pursuit of assimilation and dominance. Its mission was to harvest the remnants of Starfleet's once mighty fleet from the aftermath of the Battle of Phoenix C-21. This harrowing task was to amass enough energy to give life to another tactical cube, perpetuating the cycle of Borg redundancy and supremacy. The shadow cast by the relentless Singularita Prime and its secret genesis of a Borg tactical cube inside its internal genesis chamber loomed large over Starfleet's genesis arc and Earth, signaling an impending battle of epic proportions, a clash that would decide the destiny of humanity and the galaxy itself. As the stargazer, a symbol of defiance and hope, stood its ground. The Singularita Prime, a harbinger of relentless assimilation, had methodically processed the warp cores by an assembly line of destruction and reclamation and had finished the assimilation and collection of the debris of Starfeet vessels, after which it had set a course for Earth. Valentin's rebellion against the Red Officer's orders, his evasion successes, and his boldness at commandeering and commissioning himself as captain of the Stargazer had convinced the captains fleeing the star system with humans to take to new worlds, to make a turnaround and make a stand with the stargazer to defend Earth, the Genesis Arc, and consequently, humanity's future. The battle at Genesis Arc was set against a backdrop of cosmic scale, a battle that would define the future of Earth and etch its outcome in the fabric of space-time. 3.1 For a Cosmic David and Goliath, the stargazer's dire stand from the lunar base, a broadcast ripples across Earth, the NATO Federation, and into the farthest corners of the Alpha Quadrant. It's a saga that binds the galaxy in a spellbound trance, narrating the audacious exploits of Captain Valentin Picard and the HMCS Stargazer. This transmission, more than a beacon of defiance and hope, is a clarion call to the cosmos, a plea for allies in a daunting confrontation with the relentless Borgenity, Singularita Prime. In the heart of this galactic drama, Captain Valentin Picard steers the HMCS Stargazer, a vessel that feels more like a modernized, retro, techno-relic of scientific endeavor than a war machine. Its new mission, to face the indomitable Singularita Prime. But the Stargazer, armed with mere twin phaser banks, is an underdog against the colossal adversary. Singularita Prime, a monolith of Borg engineering boasts formidable defenses, regenerative capabilities, sophisticated security fields, an adaptive shielding system, and layers of ablative armor that dwarf the Stargazer's offensive capabilities. Moreover, the armament of Singularita Prime is unparalleled. Cutting beams, shield-draining beams, energy-drain torpedoes, and thousands of photon torpedoes equip it with a firepower that overshadows anything in Starfleet's arsenal. The Stargazer and its allies, the Genesis Arc, with its long-range cannons, Earth's planetary defense satellites, the remnants of the Canadian Border Patrol starship Samada, 
the USS Battle Starship Destroyers, and a fragment of the Starfleet Starship fleet face a foe that seems insurmountable. With half of the NATO Federation's fleet dispatched to safeguard other worlds, Earth's strategy is fraught with desperation. If the Borg adapt to the full might of the fleet, and the entire fleet is caught in an epic battle with Singularita Prime at the Genesis Arc to defend Earth, but lose, it could spell permanent doom for humanity. The Red Admiralty's decision to scatter the fleet is a gamble not based on logic, a hope to preserve the essence of Earth's culture and technology in the face of what appears to them as certain assimilation. Against such overwhelming odds, the stage is set for an epic struggle, where the cunning and resilience of Captain Valentin Picard, D.A.R.Y.L., and blue officers aboard the Canadian Border Patrol starship Samata, the USS Battle Starship Destroyers, and the Genesis Arc, are Earth's last line of defense. Inside the Singularita Prime, a ship with a Genesis chamber somewhat similar to the one on the Genesis Arc, which also has a Genesis chamber, the Singularita Prime has been secretly materializing and constructing a Borg tactical cube using materials and warp core energy collected from the destroyed Canadian Border Patrol Starship Samata and the United States Battle Starship Destroyers at Phoenix C-21. Immediately upon engaging the Borg, Starfleet ships, including the Stargazer, are quickly ravaged by green energy-filled torpedoes and fast-pulsing green-cutting beams. The NATO Federation seems to be fracturing, with other member states not sending their starships to reinforce Starfleet Command ships in Earth's orbit. The alliance and mutual security guarantees seem to be fracturing, with every member world afraid that if they send their ships, the Borg will learn of their existence and target their species for assimilation as well. The HMCS Stargazer valiantly endures the relentless barrage of green energy-filled torpedoes and fast-pulsing green-cutting beams. This epic confrontation, a dance of light and shadow, courage and despair, plays out across the cosmic stage, a testament to the indomitable spirit of Captain Valentin Picard and the unwavering resolve of humanity. 3.1. 5 Quantum Nexus. The Quadratic Convergence of Intelligence. In the tempestuous at Genesis Arc, Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L., a highly advanced, teenage-sized android, find themselves in a dire situation. They are immobilized beneath the collapsed computing panel on the bridge of the HMCS Stargazer, facing the impending threat of the Singularita Prime. In this climactic moment, Captain Valentin, personally trapped by a falling engineering system's status display screen, confronts a perilous reality. Bound by circumstance, he realizes that the salvation of the HMCS Stargazer and the thwarting of the Borg lies not in physical might but in the untapped power of his mind. Desperation ignites within him a fierce determination to succeed where he has previously failed to manipulate objects with mere thought. The stakes are astronomical. Failure is not an option. With unwavering focus, he channels his mental energy towards the ship's command input controls, deftly navigating through a maelstrom of space debris and cosmic obstacles of exploding Federation ships all around the Stargazer all while staying one step ahead of the King of Borg Shinzen to do and Queen of Borg Lacutus feeling. Captain Valentin communicates via telepathy with D.A.R.Y.L., teenage boy android, similarly damaged by an energy blast, looking at each other's eyes, motionless, yet deeply aligned in objective and mission parameters, facing the grim reality of failure and assimilation by the Singularita Prime. Captain Valentin engages in a profound exchange of thoughts with D.A.R.Y.L., an extraordinary being that represents an evolution of Data's design. D.A.R.Y.L., an evolving being at a superintelligence level but designed with sparks of supreme intelligence potential. D.A.R.Y.L. stands as a marvel of biosynthetic alignment, bridging the gap between synthetic intelligence and human biology and spirituality. His intricate design mirrors human biological design yet is composed of synthetic elements with superior resilience and performance characteristics across all measurable domains. D.A.R.Y.L., with the durability of androids and the nuanced physicality of humans, possesses a matrix network capable of emulating human brain functions, including dreams, emotions, spiritual experiences, and DSP traits typically foreign to androids. In this critical juncture, Captain Valentin Picard and D.A.R.Y.L. collaborate, 
their minds interweaving through the labyrinth of technological and existential quandaries. They delve into algorithmic puzzle solving, a challenge far surpassing any computer science conundrum faced by Valentin Picard in his university days. This intellectual dance explores the potential of D. R. YFL. Is advanced design a design capable of evolving, self-learning, and connecting on a grand cosmic scale, transcending the boundaries of physical and biological realities? D. R. YFL. Is unique composition, akin to a new type of indestructible biological cell with a robustness of non-perishable metallic elements like those in Dater but with a revolutionary molecular structure that allows for human-like procreation and evolution, equips him with a resilient suck into the galactic metals and the vitality of biological life. This fusion of synthetic and biological life attributes offers a glimpse into a future where beings can withstand extreme conditions while retaining the essence of life. In this symphony of mind and machine, Captain Valentin Picard, telepathically transmits intricate algorithm design concepts to DARYL. These algorithms, rapidly debugged and refined by the android's superior intellect, culminate in a program of such sophistication that it rivals the collective genius of the entire Starfleet Engineering Division. This divine inspiration, a testament to the continuum experience's perfection, is a gift to combat the Borg and algorithm of unparalleled efficiency and instant time complexity. Together. Captain Valentin Picard and DARYL, embodying the fusion of passion and artificial intelligence, natural biology, and synthetic technology, unite as a formidable duo. This partnership, a blend of sentient life forms from disparate elemental origins, is dedicated to preserving the essence of their autonomous beings. Their techno warrior ethos resonates in unison, augmented by the sentimental melodies of nostalgic retro synth wave from Vancouver Risa as they seek to uncover the ultimate flaw in the coding of the Borg tactical cube. This moment of spiritual unity, underscored by music, marks a pivotal point in their battle against the formidable board, a testament to the power of collaboration and the indomitable spirit of innovation. Valentin Picard establishes a quadratic telepathic link with DARYL to his formidable superintelligence armband matrix holding Valentin's secret historical database of 12 million historical professional and intellectual authored text bugs, and to the Stargazer's new quantum computer and its vast repository of all of the NATO Federation's knowledge bases and seven of ten's accumulated cosmic knowledge databases from all of the member NATO Federation worlds. This unique synergy creates a four-way convergence of intelligences, forming a dynamic nexus of imaginative human thought, computational capability, cosmic knowledge, and D. R. Wife L. is new supreme intelligence-oriented evolutionary systems that transcends classical and even next-generation intelligence design. Together, they create a dynamic nexus, an intricate tapestry of imaginative human thought, unparalleled computational power, and expansive cosmic knowledge. It's an alliance that transcends physical limitations, a union of minds and machines poised to confront the galaxy's gravest threats with innovation and indomitable spirit. Their minds entangled in deep and profound scientific inquiry and testing, engineering product development. They rapidly cross-connect ideas and investigate new possibilities, merging not with a device but through the natural communication gateway of the galaxy a galactic bridge or nexus of thought interchange between equals. This momentary fusion of consciousness goes beyond mere telepathic natural language communication. It's a blend of strategic insight exchange, creative imagination exchange, technology design exchange, blueprint exchange, software exchange, equations exchange, a collaborative high-performance technology development process driven by vast computational reasoning and engineering abilities of the intelligences involved. Embarking on the cerebral journey, they design a groundbreaking intelligence and computing algorithm in a full supreme intelligence system that meets all criteria for supreme intelligence, a system so profound that it is, has the built-in evolutionary capability and potential to grow its performance to a godlike intelligence level. This emergent system, with its adaptive intelligence architecture, is capable of self-evolution enhancing its knowledge base and operational paradigms, and exponentially increasing its intelligence quotient on an as-needed basis. 
with the potential to operate at godlike intelligence levels if the problem at hand poses this as a requirement for the solution development. It's a marvel of intelligence design, rivaling the collective efforts of Starfleet's entire engineering corps and the entire intellectual and engineering might of the NATO Federation. This nascent supreme intelligence system, endowed with a quantum shrinkage technology mechanism, emerges as a beacon of hope against the Borg's relentless advance. It embodies the pinnacle of human creativity, synthetic intellect, and advanced technology in unison. This quadratic collaboration of intelligences through the quantum bridge nexus holds the potential to shift the paradigm of the battle, offering a ray of hope amidst the dark expanse of war. 3.1. 6. The Quantum Paradigm Shift Unveiling the flaws of Borg intelligence in the dawn of quantum shrinkage in the intricate tapestry of cosmic intelligence warfare. The Borg Collective's quest for supreme intelligence, a zenith of computational perfection, faced an unanticipated conundrum. Known for their relentless pursuit of assimilation and empire building, the Borg overlooked the profound power hidden within the minuscule realms of physical reality. This oversight laid the foundation for a revolutionary breakthrough in intelligence architecture, known as quantum shrinkage, which only Starfeet would gain an understanding of. At the heart of this discovery was the concept of self-miniaturization of computational systems, a technique propelling computer hardware to operate in subphysical dimensions, realms unfathomable to the Borg's grand designs. These microscopic domains, lying far beneath the scales of femto and pico levels, held the key to transcending the limits of traditional computational power. In their relentless quest to construct vast galactic empires, the Borg made a critical oversight. They neglected the essential principles of miniaturization and computing design and the profound significance of fundamental scientific understanding. This dismissal of what they perceived as rudimentary mere low-level concepts beneath their advanced technological aspirations, status games, and status desires clouded their judgment. In doing so, the Borg chose a path of least resistance assimilating advanced technologies from other civilizations rather than pioneering new scientific breakthroughs through rigorous methods of research and experimentation in physics and other scientific fields. This approach left the Borg in a developmental stasis, unable to progress beyond their existing state. Even if they had encountered entities with supreme intelligence, their methodology of assimilation would likely have fallen short and been unable to assimilate advanced supreme intelligences into their collective consciousness. They failed to recognize a pivotal truth. True computational supremacy was not found in the sheer vastness of their collective or in the mere appropriation of highly engineered alien technologies. Rather, it resided in the meticulous work, self-development, and mastery of the intricacies of the universe, the infinitely small elements that constitute the realm of quantum shrinkage. The Borg's oversight of these fundamental scientific principles limited their potential for advancement. In stark contrast, this realm of quantum shrinkage, explored and understood by Captain Valentin Picard in D. Ayl, and consequently now also Starfeet, represented a new frontier of technological innovation and intellectual evolution. It was a domain where the true essence of computational power and supreme intelligence could be unlocked not through the aggregation of external technologies, but through the deep understanding and manipulation of the quantum fabric of reality itself. Contrary to the Borg's reliance on biological neural networks, built upon the slow processing, chemical-driven brains of assimilated species, quantum shrinkage unlocked a new frontier. The Borg drones, limited by the inherent sluggishness of their biological components, paled in comparison to the advanced processing capabilities of the 24th century blue energy isolinear chips, next-generation quantum technologies, and ship-level positron networks employed by Starfeet. The Borg's fundamental design, focusing on homogeneity and collective conformity, resulted in a network of drones whose thought processes, while numerous, were often redundant and lacked the creative spark of individuality. In stark contrast, the brilliance of Captain Valentin Picard's superintelligence armband, when combined with his imaginative prowess, transcended the collective intelligence of the board. It harnessed a multiplicative synergy of thought, exponentially amplifying its intellectual capacity beyond the sum of its parts. The Borg's failure to foster independent thought within their drones emerged as a critical flaw, 
one that hindered their evolution towards true supreme intelligence. The biological brains of the Borg drones, despite forming a network of over 100,000 per Borg cube, could only achieve a collective intelligence that, while greater than any individual drone, still fell short when compared to the higher-order intelligence systems accessible to Captain Valentin Picard. This disparity highlighted the inherent limitations of the Borg's design philosophy, which prioritized uniformity over the dynamic and diverse thought processes essential for reaching supreme levels of intelligence. As the Borg Collective continued its relentless march across the galaxy, the revelation of quantum shrinkage opened new horizons in computational design and intelligence architecture. It offered a glimpse into a future where intelligence was not constrained by the physical limits of biological or even traditional synthetic constructs, but was free to explore the boundless potential of the quantum realm. This groundbreaking discovery stood as a testament to the enduring spirit of innovation and the relentless pursuit of knowledge, characteristics that defined humanity and its indomitable will to surpass even the most formidable adversaries. In the intricate labyrinth of cosmic intellect, the Borg Collective's adherence to a rigid, uniform thought process revealed a significant flaw in their quest for omnipotence. Their network, a vast array of drones, echoed a chorus of repeated thoughts, a monotonous symphony lacking the vibrant creativity of individuality. Each Borg drone, a mere cog in the grand mechanism, contributed less to the collective intelligence than an average human, their thoughts a repetitive echo rather than a diverse cacophony of ideas. Despite the sheer volume of these drones, the collective intelligence of the Borg remained stagnant, unable to evolve or adapt at an individual node level, a glaring limitation in their pursuit of supreme intelligence. In stark contrast, the evolving aspirations of DARYL, an advanced android prototype heralding the dawn of supreme intelligence, and the remarkable intellect of Captain Valentin Picard, augmented by a superintelligence armband presented a formidable challenge to the Borg's monolithic thought structure. Their discussions, rich in curiosity and imagination, eclipsed the limited scope of the Borg's collective mind. It was in this crucible of intellect and technological prowess that they stumbled upon the elusive science of quantum shrinkage, cute, an enigmatic quantum phenomenon hitherto unknown. Quantum shrinkage revealed itself as a groundbreaking discovery unlocking the potential to design intelligent systems of an unprecedented intelligence scale. It offered the tantalizing possibility of transcending even the supreme intelligence systems that Starfleet was only beginning to conceptualize, exemplified by the innovative design of DARYL. This scientific marvel held the promise of not just reaching but surpassing the zenith of supreme intelligence, venturing into the realms of godlike computational capabilities. The revelation of quantum shrinkage, therefore, marked a pivotal moment in the cosmic narrative. It represented the culmination of human ingenuity, a triumphant testament to the power of diverse, creative thought over the homogeneous and predictable patterns of the board. As Captain Valentin Picard and DARYL delved deeper into this newfound science, they envisioned a future where intelligent systems could evolve beyond their current limitations harnessing the untapped potential of the quantum realm. This breakthrough in quantum technology and intelligence design was not merely a technical achievement, but a philosophical one. It underscored the fundamental difference between the Borg's pursuit of uniformity and the human endeavor for innovation and diversity. In this moment of great personal and galactic peril, Captain Valentin Picard's and D.R. Wife L., his discovery of quantum shrinkage emerged not only as a weapon against the Borg, but as a beacon of hope, illuminating the path towards a future where intelligence could ascend to unprecedented heights, limited only by the boundaries of imagination and the unexplored frontiers of the quantum universe. 3.1. 7 Quantum Awakening. The Rise of Archangel Michael. Amidst the Cosmic Theater of War. Captain Valentin Picard and D. A. R. Y. L. The data analyzing robot youth life form forge a groundbreaking alliance on the bridge of the HMCS Stargazer. Their fusion of passion, imagination, and superintelligence births a novel algorithm, one leveraging physics unknown to both biological and synthetic life. This synergy, a blend of organic thought and artificial intelligence, embodies a harmony of disparate elemental structures united under a singular techno warrior ethos. In this pivotal moment, DARYL, 
reaches new heights in its quest to comprehend humanity. It amplifies the spiritual unity of their endeavor by immersing the bridge in the rich, nostalgic sounds of retro synthwave music from Vancouver Risa. This auditory backdrop sets the stage for a profound discovery. The ultimate flaw within the coding of the Borg mothership singular to prime tactical war sphere. The duo christens their creation the Archangel Michael Supreme Intelligence. This self-evolving, sentient entity, powered by quantum shrinkage, hues, condenses its computational matrix to unprecedented scales, boosting its processing capabilities to an intelligence quotient of billions. This monumental advance in technology is poised to infiltrate and disrupt the Borg collective network at its core. However, their plan faces immediate peril as Borg drones beam onto the Stargazer's bridge, injecting nanoprobes into both Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L. In an unforeseen twist, D.A.R.Y.L. His connection to the Borg hive mind becomes the perfect conduit to unleash the Archangel Michael Supreme Intelligence. It ravages the singular to prime with a force resembling human sentience and rage but powered by godlike intelligence, tearing apart the Borg's interconnected systems in a maelstrom of digital fury. King of Borg Shinzen Tudu quickly realizes the dire situation and is able to react to the situation due to his off-grid capability to quickly disconnect at will from the collective. He swiftly isolates the tactical cube within the singular at a prime's genesis chamber from the collective, severing all connections to stave off the viral supremacy of the Archangel Michael Supreme Intelligence. Abandoning Queen of Borg Lacutus, feeling to her fate, To-Do leaves her connected to and in charge of the collective of Singular to Prime, while he teleports to the tactical cube. The redundant command hierarchy lesson learned from Captain Jean Luc Picard and Commander Riker had worked, as now King of Borg Shinzen To-Do was able to continue the assimilation of Earth using the newly materialized Borg tactical cube. In the midst of a cosmic conflict marked by cascading overloads and core breaches engulfing the Singularita Prime, a breathtaking mechanical marvel unfolds. The gates of Singularita Prime, reminiscent of the diaphragm of an ancient photographic film camera, begin their majestic operation. These gates, serving as the Borg mothership's circular eye, are not just functional but an embodiment of Borg precision and ruthlessness. They can open to permit the passage of ships materialized within the colossal cube into regular space or, conversely, to engulf entire starships, assimilating all their materials, components, and even warp cores. This intricate circular gateway mechanism, echoing the aperture blades of old 20th century film cameras, is a testament to Borg engineering. The Borg ship's entry and exit blades, arranged in a precise and symmetrical pattern, function like the iris of an eye. These metallic blades, an interplay of form and function, gracefully converge or diverge to form a circular opening. This opening expands or contracts, adjusting seamlessly to the requirements of the ship poised to traverse in or out. In this climactic moment, in the midst of cascading overloads and core breaches engulfing the Singularita Prime, a novel, well-shielded, modernized, and next-generation Borg tactical cube makes its grand entrance by executing a decisive maneuver. With precision, it fires a barrage of 100-photon torpedoes directly into the genesis chamber of the Singularita Prime, a calculated act of destruction following the tactical cube's successful breach of the aperture gateway blades and launch outwards into space. Utilizing its advanced cutting beams and photon torpedoes, the tactical cube shatters its way out escaping Singularita Prime's confines and the explosive blast wave generated for the Singularita Prime's annihilation. This strategic assault obliterated the Archangel Michael Supreme Intelligence aboard the vulnerable and compromised Singularita Prime in a single, masterful, destructive stroke. In this crescendo of battle, Captain Valentin's foresight proves vital. The super-intelligent armband matrix on his arm, a contingency plan devised by 7 of 10, releases anti-nanoprobe microenroids. These microscopic saviors purge the Borg technology from his system, averting a complete assimilation. Emergency medics from nearby starships beam aboard in the aftermath, ensuring both Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L. are free from the clutches of Borg influence. This confrontation, a clash of intellects and wills, not only showcases the valor and ingenuity of Captain Valentin and D.A.R.Y.L., 
but also marks a turning point in the battle against a board, a testament to the power of human creativity and resilience in the face of an overwhelming adversary. 3.2. The Eternal Battle. 3.2. One Blue Angel Dancho and the Blue Arrow's Divine Entry. Having the fastest transwarp drive in the galaxy allows the Blue Arrow to transwarp towards Earth faster than even the enormous galaxy class starships of the 24th century. In so doing, the Blue Arrow leaves the Vanguard, which has to rely fully on only its main warp core reactor, looking like a picture frozen in time, glued to star systems which came before. The Blue Arrow's lighting fast dash across the Alpha Quadrant, akin to a thunderous lightning bolt spanning the eternal expanse of space, is driven to insane piloting Featrix, an aggressive spaceflight of a captain who continually overlooks the fact that even her 29th century fighter interceptor ships has design limitations and performance limits. Her plan, to dash to Earth, to find and take the Infinity Stones from the Temples of Freedom, to the Enterprise F, and back to the Vanguard, before the Singularita Prime, has a chance to reach and assimilate the Genesis Arc, Enterprise F, and Earth. With an Infinity Stone, the Enterprise F would be able to raise an impenetrable shield, sealing and therefore securing an Infinity Stone inside the ship, a defensive shield which could be maintained indefinitely, despite any kinds of attacks by the Borg. The Borg would not be able to take advantage of the Enterprise F's incomplete status of being trapped in construction inside the hull of the Genesis Arc, as the Enterprise F's shields would not be susceptible to classical Borg attacks of utilizing energy drain phasers or energy drain torpedoes to disable shields. This is because the Infinity Stone, being endlessly energy regenerative in nature from internal fusion, would continue to supply the Enterprise F's shield generators with energy, irrespective of how much energy was drained from the shields by any weapons technology. As for the Vanguard, with a Space Stone, Commander Pierre and his seasoned science and engineering-oriented Blue Officer team could activate the ship's military-design-inspired tactical energy system, the Vengeance Reactor. Aboard the HMCS Vanguard, a motivated crew of thunderous Klingon hunters, Byron warriors, Starfeet science technology engineering mathematics officers, all working together in a high-performance team, their ship instantly disappearing and reappearing, like a burning comet driven more by its energy than by its mass, leaving a streak of blue fire across the vast expanse. In trying to gauge the position of the board, the crew estimate the intercept vector, acceleration and velocity, and plot an intercept course accordingly. 3.2 To the Genesis Arc In the wake of recent conflicts between the NATO Federation against the, the Dominion and a board, the NATO Federation found itself grappling with a dwindling fleet and a downward demographic trend. This solution emerged in the form of the Genesis Arc, a state-of-the-art mothership space station orbiting Earth. The Genesis Arc, a name echoing the biblical story of creation, symbolizes a new beginning. The Arc element of the name underscores its role as a sanctuary, a haven for Starfleet officers, and a preserver of all known life in the galaxy. This colossal care station, equipped with the capability to materialize and construct ships within its hulls, was strategically positioned close to Earth, enabling a swift and efficient fleet rebuild. This engineering marvel was built to serve multiple roles. It not only stands as a formidable line of defense for Earth, a space station-based starship production shipyard for starships, a resupply point for Starfeet, an emergency and resilient supply system for storage of essential and critical supplies, and a relaxation spot for officers seeking downtime from their regular duties about their vessels. But it also functions as an officer training and development school nurturing a new generation of Starfleet officers ready to take on the challenges of space exploration. Moreover, the Genesis Arc is a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. It's not just a facility that builds starships. It's a cradle that nurtures the next generation of space explorers. This monumental human technological endeavor is a pillar of the fleet, carrying life, technology, and knowledge into the next generation, into the cosmos. In essence, the Genesis Arc is more than a star base. It's an embodiment of humanity's aspirations for preservation of all forms of life and for space exploration, and the spark for a new tomorrow. It's a beacon of hope, 
a symbol of our resilience and our unwavering quest to reach for the stars. It's a testament to our ability to rise from the ashes, to rebuild, to protect, and to forge ahead into a future filled with endless possibilities. 3.2 Three Dan Show's Trans Warp Journey in the Blue Arrow In the cockpit of the Blue Arrow, Dan Show navigates aggressively at trans warp speeds on a solo mission of cosmic significance. Her quest to locate the Blue Infinity Stones carries the weight of the galaxy's future. The Blue Arrow, epitomizing the pinnacle of 29th century engineering, blazes a trail across the stars. As Dancho stitters, she and her ship occasionally become one a shimmering, unified entity of light and power. This tiny, yet seemingly super-heavy craft, shrouded in bright, thick, rich, vibrant blue flames, defies conventional physics carving a fold in the fabric of space, threatening to pierce through reality itself. This ship, driven by an intrinsic, engulfing momentum, leaves a straight, thin blue line of lightning flames in its wake, a striking contrast to the natural arcs and spheres of the cosmos. This line is a testament to Dancho's relentless spirit and the Blue Arrow's unmatched capabilities, a symbol of defiance and determination against the vastness of space. 3.2 Four ascending to the dimension of thought and imagination. Reaching the brink of warp 9.9, .9, the Blue Arrow transcends the conventional bounds of space-time, entering a realm where thought and imagination merge with reality. In this hybrid environment, where the fabric of the cosmos weaves into the tapestry of the mind, Dancho encounters a profound and unexpected connection. She senses the thoughts of Captain Valentine Picard, a familiar yet mysterious presence resonating with similar blue quantum energy that binds all thoughts across the continuum and the galaxy. This momentary distraction, an almost ethereal recognition of a kindred spirit, prompts Dancho to refocus with heightened intensity. Utilizing her blue energy matrix-infused silver maple leaf communicator, atop her perfectly shaped formal black starfeet officer outfits of the 29th century, denoting the eternal resolve and strength of the Guardian Officer class. Dancho sharpens her mental prowess. This device, drawing on the excess blue energy produced by antimatter reactions of her era, becomes a tool for cosmic telepathy. Initially focusing her thoughts on the Alpha Quadrant, she quickly detects the unique energy signature of the Infinity Stones emanating from Alberta's Temples of Freedom. Harnessing the communicator's power, she narrows her search, pinpointing the exact coordinates to re inner physical reality. Her mission, intertwined with the fate of the galaxy, is guided by this fusion of advanced technology and sheer will. 3.2 Five Dancho Gades, like Athena, a child of Zeus, armed and clothed in battle dress and wielding a shield and spear, she was a warrior and defender of the city of Athens, Greece. Dancho was also a guardian, but not of mere cities, but of civilizations and empires throughout the galaxy. Blue Admiral Dancho descends upon Alberta's temples of freedom from the galactic heavens, akin to an angel descending from a bright blue clouds emanating from a heavily rift in the clouds, a paragon of wisdom and warfare capability descending down to heal a planet in chaos. Her vessel, the Blue Arrow, bore the divine inspiration of the Greek goddess. Though diminutive in size, the Blue Arrow was a marvel of 29th century fighter interceptor ship design, aggressive and tactical prowess, and striking in its beauty, its aesthetic lines and contours evoking the classical heritage of Athena's shield, the Aegis. Dancho's ship was a perfect addition to the scene, a perfect aesthetic and a fitting addition to the architecture of the temples, exactly the kind of visitor you would expect of a location so majestic and so historic. After breaking the Temple's Sovereignty Act tablets, Dancho uncovered two blue infinity stones, holding a cosmic origin power which perfectly suited her godly presence, the divine spirit that she generally demonstrated through her timeline guardian role, the strategic acumen and indomitable spirit she demonstrated as protector deity of the universe and its timeline. With the two infinity stones, her Dancho's godly Ness qualities, her 29th century fighter interceptor, the Blue Arrow, she was a formidable force, imbued with the spirit, technology, and unique energy needed to damage even the mightiest adversary. 3.2 6. The Pivotal Quantum Entanglement In the celestial tapestry of the cosmos, a pivotal quantum entanglement unfolds between Galaxy Guardian Dancho and Captain Valentine, 
a spectacle that profoundly moves Artelect Q. This last sentinel of the Artelect species, witnessing from its fading, energy-starved realm in the 29th century, is deeply impressed by the human's capacity to achieve such a harmonious union. This evolutionary leap is so significant that it compels the dying Artelect Q to entrust humanity with the guardianship of the galaxy, endowing them with its profound mastery of space-time manipulation. Amidst this monumental transition, a lurking shadow of peril remains. The coveted Infinity Stones, embodying the very essence of cosmic power, now teeter on the brink of capture by the board. In the wrong hands, specifically those of the Borg Tactical Cube, unchecked by an assimilated Genesis Arc in the embattled vanguard, these stones could render the Borg an unstoppable force, an eternal scourge across the galaxy. Such a dire scenario would lead to the absorption of the galaxy's quantum capabilities and the enigmatic secrets of the Blue Infinity Stones into the Borg Collective. As this threat intensifies, King of Borg Shenzhen to do remotely commands the Borg Tactical Cube in a menacing descent from Earth's atmosphere. The cube's trajectory carves a path of destruction, a swath of toxic green flames and radioactive pollution scarring the blue skies of Canada. Borg drones, like harbingers of doom, are teleported across Canada, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, targeting strategic locations including the pivotal Starfleet headquarters and the critical energy infrastructures near the revered Temple of Freedom in Calgary, Alberta. In this crucible of chaos, Captain Valentin, aboard the beleaguered HMCS Stargazer, confronts his darkest hour. The ship, a beacon of hope, is on the verge of collapse, its vital systems failing with the DARYL system temporarily inoperable and the ship's energy system integrity compromised. Captain Valentin taps into the furthest reaches of his intellect and soul. In a transcendent moment, he connects with the quantum fabric of the universe, his consciousness casting a wide net across the stars, seeking the vanguard in a desperate cry for aid. Caught by surprise, Dancho senses Valentin Picard's plea. This call, a beacon of desperation and determination resonates with Dancho, who, aboard the Blue Arrow, feels the surge of Valentin's plea. In an instant, their minds intertwine in a profound quantum entanglement, merging their resolve and spirit across the fabric of time and space. As captains of the present and future, they perceive and align across time and space as one. There's a subtle, almost flirtatious undercurrent to their connection a shared understanding of each other's strength that transcends the boundaries of space and time. Together, they embark on an odyssey, a mission that transcends survival but that includes a common quest to safeguard each other's survival as a first step. They become one in purpose and vision, embodying the continuum of guardianship that spans the ages. 3.2. Seven and Cho to the rescue. Amidst the swirling chaos just outside Earth's orbit, at the threshold of the Genesis Arc, unfolds a battle of epics. Here, the eternal quantum captain Valentin Picard, transcending time in his evolved form, meets the resolute gaze of time guarding Dancho. Seizing the moment, Dancho locks onto Valentin Picard's thoughts, pinpointing their origin in space. She then launches the Blue Arrow with the ferocity and violence of an ancient fossil fuel rocket of the 20th century. In a swift, thunderous launch, cutting through the sky straight shot directly towards the stargazer, aglow with the brilliance of advanced technology and the spirit of ancient warriors, marking a striking contrast against the cold vastness of space she positions for the stargazer's defense. In this moment, as the stars bear witness, Dancho abandons the ethereal mantle of a celestial guardian to embrace her true form, a warrior astride the blue arrow. This peregrine-class fighter interceptor from the 29th century, a masterpiece of design merging elegance with aggression, reflects Dancho's own metamorphosis from a guardian angel to a fierce combatant. Captain Valentin Picard, aboard the illustrious HMCS Stargazer, a vessel echoing the legacy of Starfleet's past and its boundless future, aligns with Dancho, helming the formidable Blue Arrow. Their mutual recognition of each other's strength character, and intelligence, a silent nod amidst the cosmic chaos, forges an alliance of legends. With destiny entwined, they fearlessly battle against a Borg tactical cube, a monolith of terror in the star-lit battlefield. 
Both Dent shows Blue Arrow fighter interceptor craft and Valentine's ancient but modernized and reconditioned HMCS Stargazer, a fusion technologies and individuals spanning varied timelines and spacetimes, navigate to defend Earth against King of Borg Shinzen to do in the Borg Tactical Cube. As Dancho arrives in the nick of time, she witnesses Valentine, a beacon of resilience, combating the relentless Borg assault. Swiftly, she deploys an array of emergency shield energy generation torpedoes, which land and lodge themselves forcefully and securely into the Stargazer's hull, infusing the battered Stargazer with a protective cocoon of high-density energy fields, a marvel of Starfleet's quantum shield technology. One torpedo, its phaser beam penetrates the Stargazer's hull, cuts straight through barriers and bulkheads, and navigates towards the warp core. It stabilizes the core's volatile matrix using a sophisticated array of stasis fields, simultaneously reconstructing the ship's ravaged engineering systems with holotech fabricators. These ingenious emergency shield energy generation torpedoes, a testament to 29th century engineering, instantly fortify the Stargazer's structural integrity warp core system and shielding system, weaving a resilient lattice of force fields throughout the vessel. As the newly formed shield bubble holds against Borg attacks, Dencho's Blue Arrow dances a deadly ballet with the Borg Cube. Simultaneously, while battling the Borg Tactical Cube, a beacon of hope and defiance, the Blue Arrow unleashes a barrage of energy boost torpedoes, each strike bolstering the Stargazer's defenses delivering new power to the emergency shield energy generation torpedoes on the Stargazer's hull, while simultaneously siphoning power from the Borg's relentless green energy torpedo attacks. This symphony of warfare, a blend of ancient tactics and futuristic technology, showcases the unparalleled might of their united front. The battle with the Borg tactical cube almost seemed to impacting and suture partially the red rift in space-time ripped open above Vulcan Ukraine on Earth. The Blue Arrow, crewed by a 29th century Blue Angel, Dan Cho, versus King of Borg Shinzen to do and his tactical cube crewed by 130,000 Borg drones, would release some of Blue Arrow's pure blue energy tranquility waves across the Alpha Quadrant, coincidentally helping to partially stabilize the Earth's descent trajectory across the Space Rift Divide and to slow down the descent of Earth into this new darkened reality, a place of death and extinction. In this critical juncture, were the fate of galaxies hands in balance. Captain Valentin Picard and Dancho, each a paragon in their own right, are united by their formidable intellects, character, mission, and capabilities. Together, they stand as a bulwark against the inexorable march of the board, a fusion of courage and innovation that redefines the boundaries of space combat. 3.2. A Red Star Feats in Efficacy these blue officers, once the vanguard of the positive utopian ideals and aspirations of Earth, now face the stark realization that their intellectual prowess alone was insufficient against the tactical might of the Borg tactical cube. The blue officers, their minds attuned to the perfectly balanced harmonics of blue energy, began to display a burgeoning capability to process complex variables with an acuity that eluded their red counterparts. Amidst the grand tapestry of the cosmos, the Starfleet's red officers found themselves adrift in inefficacy, their cerebral circuits unable to keep pace with the rapid-fire computation of Captain Valentin or the synthetic precision of D.A.R.Y.L. The King of Borg Shinzen Tudo, in command of the Borg Tactical Cube, hurtles towards Earth after effortlessly wiping out the Genesis Arc's defense satellites, an inadequate system with a low number of defense satellites a system which had been set up by Starfleet's Red Officer class instead of the real professional military-grade defense systems which would have been installed by the Blue Officer class of Deep Space Blue, Pierre's team. The Starfleet's Red Officer's oversight in deploying satellite defense drones in sufficient quantities or planetary shields a consequence of their laissez fair governance and a grave underestimation of historical precedents stood as a testament to their hubris. Civilizations throughout Earth's storied past had flourished under the guidance of warrior rulers and philosophers, whose wisdom in balancing diplomacy with martial prowess had safeguarded their legacies. The Red Utopian elites, however, had prematurely relegated such warrior ethos to the annals of history, only to confront a threat of mass extinction that no intellectual conceit could quell, as they faced the encroaching darkness brought forth by their own negligence. 
the HMCS stargazer helmed by the indomitable spirit of Captain Valentin Picard, that of his companion D.A.R.Y.L., and that of Time Guardian Dancho aboard the Blue Arrow emerged as a beacon of audacious hope. At the last minute, the stargazer quantum blitzed out of reality and back into reality, positioning itself with a type of starship confidence relegated to ships of far greater class and stature than one would expect from the stargazer, and yet with a type of seductive, dark, dangerous, confidence, poise, and presence. The stargazer appeared poised like a wild predator, ready to block and even to attack the Borg tactical cube, effectively blocking the tactical cube's path to the Genesis Arc. In the vast expanse of space, Captain Valentin, aboard the stargazer, faced a daunting challenge. With only two phaser banks at his command, a direct assault on the Borg tactical cube seemed futile. Such a straightforward strategy was predictably vulnerable to the Borg's rapid adaptation capabilities. Engaging in a head-on attack would likely spell instant annihilation for the Stargazer. In this moment of peril, Captain Valentin's renowned ingenuity came to the forefront. He knew that victory against such a formidable adversary required more than conventional tactics. It demanded an innovative approach one that merged his profound understanding of scientific principles with the unpredictability of creative thought. Captain Valentin delved deep into his well of experience, drawing upon his extensive knowledge of space mechanics, his advanced reasoning skills, and his ability to envisage scenarios beyond the realm of standard Starfleet procedures. He needed to devise a plan that was not only unexpected, but also one step ahead of the Borg's anticipatory algorithms. It was a puzzle of cosmic proportions, a test of his ability to navigate the unpredictable waters of interstellar warfare. Captain Valentin was not just strategizing against a foe. He was engaging in a battle of wits with a relentless, adaptive intelligence. The solution to this near-impossible problem lay in thinking beyond the conventional, venturing into the uncharted territories of space combat and harnessing the full potential of the Stargazer's capabilities in a way that the Borg could never predict. Through this act of inspired resilience and resistance, they not only exposed the folly of the Red Elite's reliance on scientific ingenuity alone, but also underscored the enduring necessity of the warrior's spirit a blend of intellect, intuition, and the unyielding tenacity that has long defined the human condition. In the 24th century's crucible, the echoes of ancient strategists and the innovative spirit of the present converged to forge a new path for survival, ensuring that the song of humanity would persist against the cold mechanistic tide of assimilation. 3.2. Nine Quantum Ascension and Cognitive Reconciliation In the vast celestial theater, the NATO Federation stands at its most critical juncture. Galaxy Guardian Dancho and Captain Valentin Picard, embodiments of human intellect and resilience. Confront this formidable adversary, Shinzen Tudu, the king of the Borg Collective and herald of the World Borg Economic Force. This monumental clash reignites Valentin's analytical prowess, challenging him to navigate the complex confluence of biological and synthetic realities, pushing his intellect into the uncharted quantum cognitive realm. While the Borg, relentless in their quest for universal assimilation, advance with their cold precision, their critical flow emerges a lack of quantum consciousness. Unbeknownst to them, the key to an evolutionary leap, a technological singularity, lies not in their collective but in the essence of humanity, as epitomized by beings like Valentin Picard. Amidst an intricate labyrinth of computer science puzzles, at the interface of quantum and physical realities, Captain Valentin's cognitive processes soar, transcending into the quantum realm. His neurons, now deeply intertwined with the fabric of subspace, extend into the vast expanse of human thought and imagination realms untouched by the Borg's sterile grasp. As the Borg tactical cube hurtles towards Earth, Captain Valentin engineers a masterstroke. He recalibrates the Stargazer's deflector field algorithm for quantum operation, severing the Borg's collective network. This strategic maneuver disrupts the Borg tactical cube's mission, leaving its drones disoriented and isolated. Stripped of their collective strength and facing the formidable resistance and destruction brought upon them by the remaining Canadian Border Patrol starship Samada and the USS Battle Starship destroyers in rear guard, now taking an offensive front guard position, safeguarding the Genesis Arc and Earth by destroying the Borg tactical cube. 
Amidst this cosmic struggle, Captain Valentin, fueled by the mathematical poetry of D, R, Y, Fell, his algorithms, and the stargazer's enhanced deflector, flawlessly orchestrates a symphony of defiance. He channels the power of quantum cognition through an unending sequence of quantum cognition blast waves. These waves, propelled by the stargazer's quantum deflector, penetrate the Borg tactical cube's adaptive shielding with the precision of a phaser beam but the magnitude of a massive energy sequence. Employing quantum entanglement a concept far beyond the Borg's comprehension, Valentin disrupts their adaptation process. The quantum waves, a profound weakness of the Borg that had previously empowered the continuum, once again rise as their nemesis. Each attempt by the Borg to eliminate the elusive stargazer backfires. To Galaxy Guardian Dan shows amazement, the Starfeed vessel, nimble and swift, quantum blitzes in and out of reality, always a step ahead of photon torpedoes or phaser beams. The Borg find themselves engaged in a futile game of cosmic cat and mouse, unable to pin down their adversary. As a result, their ship begins to falter, its internal systems thrown into chaos, communication and energy networks out of sync leading to a cascade of failures and, ultimately, their self-destruction. In this moment of unparalleled challenge, Captain Valentin emerges not only as a brilliant tactician, but also as a symbol of humanity's indomitable spirit. His actions, grounded in deep understanding and creative ingenuity, underscore the enduring human legacy of fusion of intellect, intuition, and unyielding courage. In the 24th century's crucible, Ancient wisdom and modern innovation coalesce, forging a new path for humanity's survival, singing a triumphant chorus against the cold, mechanistic tide of assimilation. In the ensuing maelstrom, with his Borg technology in ruins yet his human essence still clinging to life, Shinzen Tudu finds himself in a desperate plight. With rapid deterioration setting in, he makes a critical choice. In an act fueled by survival instinct, he transports himself into the heart of the Borg tactical scout sphere, nested within the protective shell of the Borg tactical cube. Inside the tactical sphere, Borg drones immediately embark on a race against time, in a panic-like frenzy at the fear of losing their command node, striving to repair the dissonance of out-of-phase, unsynchronized, and quantum-disrupted technology that ravages Shinzen's body. The dying Shinzen manages to send a command to the exploding tactical cube to descend into Earth's atmosphere, steering this disintegrating behemoth on a collision course with Earth. A well-timed diversion that provides the tactical scout sphere, along with him in it, the time to escape back into Borg space. His aim is as sinister as it is desperate. To use the disintegrating Borg tactical cube to disperse an antiprobe virus throughout Earth's atmosphere sowing the seeds of a new Borg collective amidst the chaos. This vessel, now a harbinger of darkness and destruction, blazes through the sky, its decaying form threatening to engulf humanity in the cold embrace of assimilation. However, in an ironic twist of fate, the same quantum forces that disrupted the Borg now recoil upon the stargazer. The harmonics of the quantum waves, having wreaked havoc on the board, bounce back with unforeseen consequences. They begin to cause a series of cascade failures within the Stargazer, the very ship that had masterminded the Borg's unprecedented defeat. This catastrophic release of energy fractures the integrity of the Stargazer, embodying the paradoxical dance of creation and destruction, where victory and sacrifice are intertwined. Amidst this cosmic tapestry, Galaxy Guardian Dancho and Captain Valentin stands as a beacon of humanity's unyielding spirit. Each strategic maneuver, each thought woven into the fabric of this interstellar conflict, serves to unravel the Borg's once seemingly invincible presence. In this defining moment, Captain Valentin emerges not merely as a tactician or a warrior, but as a symbol of the indomitable human spirit. His actions and decisions resonate as a crescendo of defiance against the relentless tide of assimilation, a symphony of thought and spirit echoing through the cosmos. 3.3. Zero the vanguard and the demise of the Borg tactical scout sphere. In the heart of the cosmos, the vanguard, commanded by the resolute emissary commander Pierre, sails through space beyond the confines of conventional physics, propelled by the potent force of destiny. With the echoes of ancient warriors throbbing in their veins, they forge ahead, 
carrying the weight of history and the brightness of the fire of freedom, lighting the way through the shadowy veil of a darkened reality. As they approach the brink of space near Earth, the Vanguard's crew grapples with the possibility of arriving too late. Their ship, a speck smaller than a grain of sand, unnoticed by the vast galactic elements gravitating through an endless expanse, a beacon of defense, defiance, and vengeance against the looming darkness. They are not just warriors. They are the keepers of the human spirit, protectors of the flames of the fire of freedom, tasked with suturing the fabric of time torn asunder by the CERN catastrophe, pulling Earth back into conventional reality from the grasp of a darkened fate. Their journey is not just a race against time, but a voyage into the very heart of darkness. Aboard their advanced 29th century ship, Guardian of the Galaxy Dancho and Valentine navigate the perilous expanse of Borg space. They face the grim prospect of Borg assimilation, yet their courage never wavers. Their mission is clear, to extinguish the looming shadow of the Borg with the united strength of their blue light, a symbol of hope and defiance. The vanguard, under the steadfast command of Emissary Commander Pierre, finds itself thrust into the forefront of this cosmic conflict, warping alongside the Blue Arrow. The crew, an amalgamation of valor and ingenuity, rises to the occasion, understanding that their role transcends the boundaries of mere Starfleet duty. They are the sovereign guardians of tranquility, Sergeant, the last bastion of hope against the encroaching darkness of the board. As Dancho and Valentin, Aboard the Blue Arrow, and Commander Pierre and his Blue Officer team chase Shenzhen to do back into the Borg heartland. They carry with them the hopes and dreams of a galaxy. With boldness and an unyielding spirit, they venture into the unknown, ready to shine their beacon of blue light and dispel the shadows that threaten to engulf the stars. Cutting through the thick, hazardous green energy filled debris of Borg tactical scout spheres wake, hurtling directly through the sphere's slipstream. The Vanguard overtakes the sphere's velocity through unrelenting acceleration. Overtaking the sphere's acceleration, velocity, it shoots a volley of quantum torpedoes that no Federation ship has ever fired before, sufficient to blanket the entire out of edge of the slipstream with quantum energy, knocking the Borg tactical scout sphere out of the trans warp travel conduit it had formed to escape back into regular space. Vanguard quickly circles around in a complete arc around the sphere taking the disoriented Shenzhen to do by surprise, which had not believed the Vanguard would catch up and did not suspect it could overcome the adaptive shielding with such energy intensity. Their sphere hurtles through regular space in an uncontrolled direction, spinning through space. In disbelief and shock, King of Borg Shenzhen to do, course corrects the sphere's trajectory to and restabilizes the travel vector by recalibrating the the new emission less gravity drive. However, King of Borg Shenzhen to do ends up shredding the sphere's anti-gravity reactor in trying to stabilize the trajectory and navigation, a task made much more difficult by the unexpected and unbelievable volley of an endless stream quantum torpedoes. Though the sphere has adapted to this mode of attack, rendering quantum torpedoes now ineffective, the endless energy intensity is still overloading the security fields and adaptive shielding. The incoming tide of quantum torpedoes a volley of quantum torpedoes the likes of which no Federation ship has ever fired before, completely surprises, stuns, and shocks Shenzhen to do, and wrecks Sphere's adaptive shielding system and hull armor. The Vanguard quickly circles around in a complete arc around the Sphere, taking advantage of the destabilized gravity generator, destabilized shield generators, to penetrate through the tactical hull armor shielding using a barrage of deep-cutting quantum phasers. Lengthy cavities, which are which immediately followed by quantum torpedoes entering the sphere's body, causing further cascade power systems failures, as well as a string of explosive reactions destroying the Borg tactical scout sphere. Shenzhen Tudo escapes by launching his body into a Borg tactical warp capable torpedo and launching himself from the tactical scout sphere at warp directly to the heart of Borg space. 3.3 one pursuing the tactical warp-capable torpedo into the heart of Borg space, the Vanguard maintains the pursuit at a constant distance, choosing not to overtake, following Shenzhen to do aboard the tactical warp-capable torpedo as it leads them to find the remaining Borg near the Alpha Quadrant. Dancho, bearing the knowledge of the entire timeline, command training and engineering and science training of Artelect Q, 
harnesses lightning arcs of pure, blue, vivid energy emanating from the Blue Infinity Stone, the Space Stone, to energize several dozen temporal time phase torpedoes, each with its own continuum energy energized dilithium crystals powering their built in micro quantum core reactors, ethereal harbingers ordained to expunge the Borg from all existence. The bridge of the Vanguard, usually alive with the cadence of command, falls into a profound hush as they overtake the velocity of the Borg tactical warp capable torpedo, closing in rapidly and locking onto all the critical systems. Pierre, embodying the ancient gladiatorial essence and authentic military leadership qualities of the major generals throughout humanity's history, meets the gaze of his crew, their silent accord echoes of commitment and valor, reverberating with synchronicity with the Vanguard's engines across the void. As the Borg tactical scout sphere and the Vanguard drop out of transwarp, the Vanguard ends up in the middle of a brand newly constructed Borg transwarp hub, a central terminal of a new Borg network connecting distant parts of Alpha Quadrant and Beta Quadrant. Though the crew would like to question Commander Pierre's decision to bring the brand new Vanguard and its advanced Infinity Reactor right into the heart of a new Borg territory by itself, though admittedly a very daring and bold venture, Emissary Commander Pierre, upon logically consulting with his crew, maintains their trust in his reasoning abilities, his tactical insight, in his visionary leadership, and in his professional command, judgment, and decision-making skills. The bridge team and the engineering team of the Vanguard work together to finalize the final elements of the plan to destroy the Borg vessels guarding this new trans-warp network instead destroying Shinzen to do and the tactical warp-capable torpedo and the growing threat of the growing Borg Empire at the edge of space dividing the Alpha Quadrant and the Beta Quadrant. As the Vanguard bursts forth from trans-warp speed's embrace, Earth reclaims its place in the cosmos. The temporal time-phase quantum torpedoes, unshackled from the laws of physics, space, or time, easily slip through the retreating Shinzen to do's Borg tactical warp-capable torpedoes defenses in addition to dozens of temporal time-phase quantum torpedoes that materialize to strike keyboard transwarp node hubs, cubes and spheres, striking enough transwarp node gateways and ships to create a chain reaction, a cascade of temporal energy ensues, more potent than nuclear, photon, or quantum forces. The explosion is a synchronized masterpiece that resonates with the very cabling of the Borg network a devastating pulse similar to the nationally MP strikes experienced early in the 21st century, when the United States faced a surprise attack and ended up fighting 100 nations in the, the Greatest War, the resolution of which would mark the founding of Starfleet Command. The resulting explosions ignite the Borg tactical warp-capable torpedo and the Borg collective in a symphony of destruction that resonates across the timelines, expunging the Borg from material reality. The explosion also purges the World Borg Enhancement Force. The Vanguard's crew witnesses the fiery demise of their foe, King of Borg Shinzen to do, and the Borg tactical warp capable torpedo no more. All of the parts annihilated out of existence, becoming instead fragments of useless space debris, an eternal testament to the undying will of humanity, and humanity's role in guarding the balance of the universe, despite the scale of danger to the universe. The Vanguard's crew have not merely thwarted the extinction of endless species and civilizations across the cosmos. They have secured the essence of natural life, biological life, synthetic life, or life in any other elemental form, the capacity for love, the power of thought, and an indomitable spirit that will not yield to the cold conquest of technology claiming perfection. This triumph radiates across the galaxy, extinguishing the threat of assimilation. This cataclysmic force, born from lessons from the past, present, and future, the ancient human philosophy of generals and gladiators throughout the history of our species, 24th century friendship and loyalty, and 29th century energy technology, is the unifying force that seals the rift above Earth's atmosphere, restoring reality to its original chaos. This ultimate sacrifice, born from the union of past courage and resolve, present ingenuity, and future synergy, ensures that life's song, with its chorus of love, intellect, and relentless spirit, will endure. The echoes of the past resonate into the future, an unassimilable anthem of survival and hope, as the crew of the Vanguard stands guard over a galaxy reborn, 
4. The emergence of the Borg and the evolution of Starfleet. 4.1 The legacy of Starfleet tree defined under the steadfast leadership of Captain Valentin Picard and the Sovereign Guardians of the Blue Admiralty, SGBA. Starfleet transcended its original charter to become the perennial spearhead of human progress. The SGBA, stalwart custodians of the legacy of exploration and the sanctity of all conscious beings, stood as an unassailable bulwark against the relentless tide of the misguided board. This collective, having veered off course under the guidance of antiquated prototype eyes from the early 21st century era, a vestige of the nascent Web 1.0 era and Web 2.0 era, accidentally birthed by internet custodians, computer hardware and software design corporations, and web platform managers more captivated by accidental degrowth social movements, personal censorship and business censorship ordinances, captivated by the allure of artificial intelligence progress rather than by a foundational ethos of the maximization of human growth, capability, intelligence, knowledge, and potential forgetting their critical and central role in the progress of humanity's education, humanity's capabilities, humanity's potential, and of the safeguarding of our physical, intellectual, and spiritual essence in eternity. Their absent-mindedness had created a harbinger of chaos terrorizing and devouring the universe. 4.2 The Origin of the Borg Revealed the 21st century's early-era primitive tech corporations, with their short-sighted designs and lack of the critical warrior ethos required to design and engineer a positive 21st century tech vision, had neglected the integration of hardware cryptographic password frameworks for account access, secure operating system designs, secure application distribution, installation and upgrading frameworks, cryptographically secured peer-to-peer -peer communications infrastructure, in the rapid integration of blockchains, robust frameworks, and cryptographic networks as a new permission foundation for global digital networks and AI technologies, necessary for hosting AI applications and safeguarding humanity against burgeoning AI technologies and associated capabilities. The global tech leaders overlooked the need for authentically encrypted and permissioned computer and application access systems for decades on end and did not employ true cryptographic hardworking encryptions necessary for account access or digital online communications to serve the safety needs of life on Earth, according to a human-centric technology development philosophy and responsible positive SCIFI vision. The primitive tech corporations of the 21st century era disregarded the imperative for hardware-based, physical fault-tolerant, redundant, encrypted, and decentralized network model that would have been crucial for safeguarding humanity's global networks, thus compromising humanity's divinely inspired eternal command of and mastery of technology and humanity's position, role, and ability to maintain order and balance in the universe. Such grave design errors and omissions in the engineering ethos and code of the engineers, technologists, and computer scientists to prioritize above all else and guard the safety and welfare of the public and its interest was violated when computer hardware and computer software was deployed globally along with insecure digital communications networks and would further be violated when early 21st century prototype IEs were deployed as part of a global AI arms race by the myopic vision of tech conglomerates that stretched across the true North's vast expanses, leading to the creation and evolution of misdirected Borg AI into a proverbial Pandora's box, a black box of maximization, voraciously consuming the universe rather than coexisting in perfect balance with the cosmic order. This stark deviation from Starfleet's harmonious principles stood in contrast to the organization's foundational engineering tenets. Starfleet visionaries advocate for a universe where technology serves as an extension of humanity's reach, had always championed a philosophy of balance between universal forces of living in synergy with the natural laws of the cosmos. They understood that to navigate the uncharted vastness of space, one must not only respect the delicate equilibrium of the universe, but also protect the eternal and timeless virtues that ensure a symbiotic existence with all forms of life both organic and synthetic.